Welcome back, everybody, to the PPL. It's time for the back half of the day. I think the matchup that I'm most excited to see has a lot of big standings implications. These two teams, SSG and Envy, about to go at it. This was the best set of the tournament last year at the World Championship. And to bring in it uh, kind of in with me, the action, Mr. Kresik alongside me, very near and dear to the Space Station Gaming guys. How do you feel about this matchup for them today? I mean, well, they lost to, they lost to them once last year. And uh, they decided they would never lose again. That's, <laughs> that's, that's been it. Pretty much been it. I mean, yeah. they, they've really kind of had Envy's number, I'd say, since that incredibly close 4-3 loss on that 3-3 Brightmarsh at Worlds. 4-1, four, 4-1 one, four, one in the first phase, 4-2 here in the second phase. And that second phase 4-2 is kind of what's impactful to me because yeah. they came in so late to the phase. Envy had already been playing games, kind of learning and understanding this meta um, for SSG to, to grab that win, I feel like really almost solidifies it for me. I would be frankly surprised if they're not able to get the win at this juncture. Um, but what I really want to ask you is where do you feel that Envy sit at this stage? Are they, are they just kind of that middle of the road, third, fourth place team, kind of like they were last year? I, I think that's where they're going to be, be hovering. And Envy really kind of, we don't know what Envy we see on the day-to-day, -day, you know, sometimes we see an Envy that, like, lose to Nip, like, last week. Yeah, that was a better-looking Nip, but Envy historically have taken NIP down going in, so it depends on how motivated they're feeling, how in sync they are, I think, in general. It's a third-to-fourth place team with explosive potential to take down almost anyone. Yeah, and that's pretty much how they found themselves. The world champions last year made a hell of a run at it. Like I said, had probably the best game of the tournament against SSG in the semifinals. To hone in a little bit on Envy, someone I want to look at, and I think a fun matchup to kind of go head-to-head -head on is Rubu and Sadak yeah, here. Yeah, I agree. P specifically because not only the off-tank role has been super vital this year, but because these two off-tank players in particular, they're going to be going after that ruckus, I think, a little yeah. bit in this matchup. This is probably one of, if not the most contested match for a ruckus player. Looking at Rubu, looking at Sadak, I mean, who do you give the edge to a little bit today? In the ruck I mean, Sadak is ruckus incarnate. We've seen the Brazilian fans make make memes of so is Sadak Rubu with though. I don't face. know, man. I don't know. This guy's ripped a couple of pentakills on ruckus in his. You're not day. wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> but still, I don't know. I, I think you're right at it being probably pretty close across the board for them. I could definitely see Rubu having an edge as kind of being the I guess the pinpoint for his team, like the aggressor in front. Sadak, I think SSG kind of goes in chaotic all over the place, and Rubu definitely leads the aggression. I would say, for Envy. In terms of the Ruckus matchup, I mean, Ruckus is kind of coming back, too, across the it board. really is. It, it, into Strix, I think, is where it's really big, having the AoE of the Rockets to find where he is <laughs> when he stealths. Keep an eye machine on Machine gun him, tracking. Yeah. yeah, otherwise you're going to lose him. Any other <laughs> any other tank, you know? Strafe one wrong way when you're playing Ash, and you're just like... Yeah, well, that's, that's the way she good. goes. <laughs> Especially if you boop him, you're just sending him completely to freedom. Yeah, no, definitely not the way to play it. Uh, Ruckus, he's been up and down. It's yeah. t He's always been a tough character for me. I don't think once in all the three years I've been doing this, I've said Ruckus is kind of the play here. I just always picture myself playing this character and, and being so slow and so big. And it's always come down to, I feel like the guys that are successful on this character in every aspect of it, when to go in, when to hexafire. It's just about knowing you're going to take 90% of your health and probably die. Yeah. You just got to make it worth it. You got to make it a death worth dying. And he's definitely not a defensive character at all, and that's why he's kind of worked better for aggressive teams. And SSG, I think, is it in terms of teams that like to go in, like to kind of set the pace of what they want. That's why Ruckus has been such a good character for them. Sadak, seem, I don't know what he's doing, but he seems to be getting ready for something back there. <laughs> Cleaning off his hands. The boys in the hand warmers today. They're going at it. They <laughs> got to be ready. I mean, especially with the bathroom in this place. Is, it is it is freezing. And some players, you know, it just got to get back to it after that. And Sadak, you said his ability to play this off tank, set that pace, Oof. go in aggressively and make it work. What are you leaning in on? This jersey. <laughs> I want sweet. one. It's like baseball, space station, MLB style jersey. These jerseys are nice. Yeah. These are nice, baby. I hang on. We got to. I think I still got a connection or two, Nick. We got to. Uh, get we in gotta, there I do. Up? I'm gonna. I'm about to hit up Sean Duras, man. I got to no, get you me. There? You watching? I got to get me one of these, man. This is not only talking about ruckus head to head, but Envy and SSG, two of the cleanest, I think, jerseys in the PPL, man. 
Yeah, for sure. The, the <laughs> button up, the button up looks so good. All right, we've done our SSG advertising. Uh, Unit, you already have my PayPal from when I was with my you guys. Goodness. Just direct it, send it straight to me. Uh, we've gotten that done. Thank you very much. We like that, man. <laughs> we like that. We take those SSG certainly looking good today, but of course they need to play good, draft good. Yeah, all that stuff is going to go into this so heavily today. I'm super excited for this match again. SSG guys traditionally has been the top dog in this one, but Envy always have that explosive power. At this point in the phase, it feels like to me uh, SSG have their feet. They're pretty well yeah. grounded here, and I think caught up for the most part. I would agree, and I like how their drafting works a lot of the time. It's not really one or two people specifically. Everyone on the team tends to have a word in mm. what they want, so it makes it That's so if, if their drafter specifically maybe isn't feeling it that day or if he doesn't get one line of the meta, they have four other people throwing out other champions <laughs> that maybe they want to play, you know, and I think it kind of helps them in – games when they need to adapt or maybe change something as they go on if they're losing maps. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the implications of this game because yes. when we were coming into today, we were highlighting what this could do to the standings. Now, SSG and Envy both have two games here today, which means this one is wicked important, right? Because not only would SSG be grabbing the win or vice versa, Envy grabbing the win, but they are also handing their opponent that loss as well to kind of give a, a two-game swing, make a little bit of distance in these standings. SSG... Uh, Virtus Pro and Envy all fighting for that fourth spot. That fourth place, it's very contested. That's the cutoff for whether you go to placements or whether you go straight into the HRX single elimination bracket. I don't know. Virtus Pro are, it ebbs and flows a little bit, right? They still have a ton of games to play. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of ripping it up right now. Now, what do they look like when they come back? I, I think know. we got to give them the benefit of the doubt there. But I'm kind of signing them off as top four already in my own book personally. So that last spot is really between these two teams. And this is the match that is going to make, I think, the most difference. Yeah, and I, I, that's why I think this week is extra important, too, because I feel like SSG have easier matches after this. They have NIP who are resurging but are, have kind of been down there. And they have Renegades. And then it's, what, VP and I think Knights after this. So... Mm. This is really important for SSG if they want to take that third place. So Frozen Guard Band there, Frog Isle, and Splitstone Quarry. And again, the the head-to-head -head as well. Even yeah. even if, like, right, SSG win this, and then Envy can still win their next matchup, right? And they'll be tied up, but it doesn't matter because SSG will have, hypothetically at that point, not lost a single match all year to Envy. And even if they do lose this one, it's still 3-1, so head-to-head -head is locked up for SSG. They just need to finish out the split strong, and they will be in a good spot. <laughs> they they laughed. We had that funny interview with Sadak that we're going down at the start. Yeah. But they really haven't fallen that far. It did not take them very long to get their feet under them. They just had a rough couple of weeks. They needed to get their, if that, their PCs. If, if they not a rough PCs half a week. Yeah. yeah. More or less. They, they did catch up pretty quickly. Are into the first map, though. Jaguar Falls. Looks like it is SSG's pick. They want to take it to this flat map where anything is possible. Willow Cassie actually, interestingly, banned from Envy. Maybe a bit of a target to Ares. I know he's been performing a lot better recently, but this is a map where we've seen him play Vivian. We've seen him play a whole story of <laughs> a whole characters. A slew of stuff, for sure. I like this. I want to talk about this. All right, so basically the same bands as last set, you know, sub -gen or Cassie and for Genos. But what do you pick first here? Khan got picked, and then I was kind of talking about, like, you know, on paper, he, he feels like he matches up better Last into Ash. But if they're both open, I, I don't know that I feel polarizing enough about one or the other, but if I look at having a Barrack and how flexible that character is, I just feel better about that selection. I don't know. What are your thoughts? For Barrack being picked early, I think it's because he's better with the healers that heal through walls. And this map has so many corners, so many little rooms you can play yeah, in. that's a good point. That having... Genos or Grover both pair very well. Genos and Grover kind of not as good with the Inara if you went that direction. I think it's a good it's a good path if you want to have on, potentially the best fight. support. And Envy don't even want to deal with the point tank or the support now. Ash what Mave, they have their aggressive off-tank flank running. angle now locked mm. down. And it's a strong one, but I think there's enough good picks on that side of the map. I don't think SSG's hurting too bad to give those up. Off-tanks are the conversations we had going into this match. I think for every other match in the PPL, for the most part, you talk about Ash and Khan, but this, in this one in game, particular, you win or you die. Ruckus is also in there that is pool no of characters, ground. so we'll kind of watch out and see if he goes any one way. I will fight with to Anara protect gobbled the sanctity up. of the wild. That's SSG grab a triple frontline comp, which I doubt they have grabbled. They have grabbed both point frontlines. I like grabbled too. Okay. <laughs> Gribbled the grabbled the Greeble Grables on Jaguar Falls. 
And I don't know what Envy are gonna do about it. I mean, this is a pretty this is a pretty objective centric map in my mind. And Envy have kind of left themselves high and dry without a point frontliner at this point. Yeah, and in our barrack, I think is a, just a solid point combination in general. It, it is kind of underrated. You can actually play them in either lane too. You're very flexible in who you want where, where the long range poke is gonna matter more. <laughs> Coming out from the barrack. Sadak playing barrack here? Because I just, I don't know. Rashaw and barrack is, that's white on rice, man. It depends. Rashaw, Rashaw's Inar is amazing when he's it is. having it's a good Inar day. It is. You know, it is it is kind of hit or miss. Con Ash, I mean, Con's still on the board, so it's not like they're getting tank screwed on the side of Envy. Yeah. It, it's not like SSG it's banned Con and they're getting forced to go Ash Ruckus or Ash Nando or something. They, they end up with a pretty solid, aggressive composition so far, but is that really a style that Envy has, has fallen back on a lot? That I don't really think super hyper-aggression when yeah. I think Envy other than maybe Fish Market. No, nope, I agree with you. I think they're uh, kind of that more standard back line. Almost like, uh, I mean, we had that uh, analogy between them and, and, and Na'Vi, kind of like the student-master relationship mm -hmm. oh, like a, a long time ago at this point. I think Envy have kind of created their own identity, but I think it was rooted in that more... You know, standard style of play, just being very good at standard paladins. Not really any funny business about it. Not a lot of things to kind of break down there. But now that they have this super aggressive composition, I'm almost looking more at SSG where they are going to have to play defensive. They're going to have to yeah. play really, really well. Spirit. Nobody's going to die or has to not die. And they have to keep the Dukes up long enough. They have to hit good walls. Give your king you know, that are netting them 20% on the objective. And they, they got to just weather the storm here from Envy. But there's so much freaking mobility on Envy's composition that I don't know how you how you get the gloves up for long enough against this. I think the BK can stall them out enough. I think that's what it is. Bomb King is so good at just locking out one choke because he's always detonating with Royal Decree three or four. You basically it's basically an endless clip. There's basically no <laughs> end to the Bomb King spam. Makes it very hard to burst through there. I'm not sure about this Moji pick if they decide to go at because I've really never really never seen Moji come out for Envy. Not sure who the player of it would be. Actually, I, I wanted to add something to your point earlier sure. about um, about Envy and Navi. Explosives. To me, Envy Check. is Navi Dashing with a looks. hard Check. blaster, like and a hardcore skill. hard lock blaster Check. slash flanker. I agree with you. Random on a backline yeah. isn't what you'd expect. Navi, you'd expect to see that from them. not so much, and Pip, Pip is kind of their supplement yeah. for that. Creatives was never like, gotta have that bomb. Key. He didn't gotta even play have that drone. Yeah, no, it was like Mutu most of yeah. the time that played it. Uh, a good point for sure. Emoji was almost, she's almost hitting the mainstream here on Jaguar Falls. I don't know. Pawn rejoice. Let's head it down to the casters in game one. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The fourth and final time in 2019, at least in the regular season, in the, yeah. in the split system we have, that SSG and Envy will go up against one another. This is one that SSG have dominated from the start of this year, winning the last three. So this is one that Envy, just to get a little separation because the race for three and four is heating up. And it's so weird to think about it. Like the, the first time, or the one time, I guess, I can remember this matchup and, and the start for it where your eyes should really fall is a year ago, world stage, 4-3, and Envy were pretty just barely able to take that one yeah. away as they go forward into the world's finals and then to become world champions. Now... SSG has their number. I think they took a took a note from that and said, "All right, we've yep. never, we are never letting that happen again if we can avoid it." And so far, they've been they've able to, to it. avoid it. So now this will be the question: whether or not they can keep it up. Five. Well, they'll look to hold on to that as a bit of self correction. This is the kind of four v five conversation. Either the auto qualification straight to the quarterfinals, yes. or you have to go through that week of qualifying. I love seeing Ares back on this Leon. It, it's a champion. SSG have. Been somewhat reluctant to pick up, but I think his performance on Leon over the last couple of weeks have given them some confidence in building compositions around Ares on the Leon. It's very weird because much like Sniper, she, she's very heavily handed in, in how well you aim. Yeah. But he hits so much more consistently on her than he does once the scope yeah. comes through. I think it really does have to come down to just that frame of reference, what exactly your field of view is going to be. And also moments like this where he's just able to kind of flank around and, and be in a good position. Oh, yeah, you don't really expect the Leon to move all the way through and around behind your team, but that's exactly what SSG did. Off to a 60% lead here on the point. In a pretty good zone to boot. It is Rochelle on the barrack, leaving Sadak on the Inar here. 87%. The fight back in from Envy is imminent here. Tulki battle shout on the Khan to keep him alive. It's kind of the battle of pure front lines versus pure off tanks. 
in this one. Random noob looking for some damage. Rubu, the opening kill on this retake. Being able to come through, Ares trades out and gets the support more specifically to be able to come through and stay alive. So SSG gonna have at least that advantage coming through. And with Rachel getting rid of Rock Monkey, makes it a lot more difficult yeah. to burn down through these frontliners. But Envy being able to at least match halfway at 51%, they have a little bit more to deal with that they just aren't quite prepared for. Well, that was a great Evil Mojo double kill. Or double Evil Mojo, rather. Only one confirmed by Random New before trading out with Ares on the Enlightenment. Assert Dominance drops down for Marubu. 63% still climbing up for Team Envy. A Dread Serpent matched out by an Overpower. One for one trade there as well. But Freeze got on the Bomb King, trying to turn this one around. King Bomb rolling on through, looking for some peel. Double kill with the King Bomb. And the cleave damage is there. Space Station Gaming are going to zone. And they're going to grab point number one on Jag Falls. Man, Freeze God was maybe a foot uh, off with one of those bombs yeah. from finding himself a triple kill. I mean, it was so close to burning down Random Noob right nice. after. They're still going to be able to get him, keep him on the ropes throughout that duration. A very, very good call from him and good timing as well. Mr. Hayes a little late to the call to throw that through time and space. And so ordinarily, that's a connect, even a kill, because he was just slightly under right. full health. But it, he just started it about halfway through the Bomb King channel, so he was able to start rolling before the connect actually came through with the shot. And the, the Enlightenment doesn't connect here either. Dome Shield used relatively aggressively by Space Station Gaming, but the fight is raging on kind of on the back line. The teams are a little bit flipped here as Ares looks to find an angle onto the members of Team Envy, but after a few fall for SSG, they're going to get run down there. And Rochelle's going to self-stagger himself out. So Team Envy able to find themselves a good defense here. And kind of a, a quick point I brought up on the mid was kind of the difference in the front lines here. You get you Barrick and Nara for SSG, more controlling, more healthy, versus kind of the aggressive Ash and Khan for Team Envy. Differences on the front lines may be playing into the way this game has gone. And being able to come through, looking at the front line specifically, so difficult, like you said, to kind of burn through what SSG have. Yeah. And that in and of itself opens up Freeze God to be maybe a little more aggressive. Sure. He has a, a definite back line or a definite front line, I guess, that he can fall behind to make sure that he's safe. Ares has been having a stellar game, 3 1 and 4, because no one can really get to him. Oh, and that's a Dread Serpent that peels off for the evil mojo. Well played there by Mittau. Sadak and Ares getting some kills as well. Mr. Hayes back on defense. Trying to peel for the rest of his team. Has another through time and space. Could find a target. That's Goes good. up. Connects with a couple. Gets one kill. Sets up Sadak for death, but he gets some healing. Does the Inara for Space Station Gaming. And that's a great stall out for Envy. Man, nothing heals quite as well as an all Dampa does. It's just watching Inara teeter on the edge of death. That's a Genos, she's dead. If that Honestly, if it's a wow. Furia, she's probably dead. It's just delayed a little bit longer. Maldamba was one of the only champions, I think, that could have kept her fully alive in that scenario. And Mitao did a good job keeping that going. Now here's another King Bomb charged up and ready to go. Well, the last one looked great for Freeze Ooh. God. Mr. Hayes, a double kill, right as things starting to ramp up there towards the end. Envy peel off the payload grab themselves a defensive point. So much that I think makes big differences in King Bombs. The one we're about to see was a very beautiful connect. Didn't even realize he got a kill right beforehand. But yeah, Mr. Hayes made the call yeah, to start shooting. Close. He actually, yeah, I like where he aimed. It's slightly ahead because he knew where he was going to be rolling to. It was just a little too late. But Freeze God in kind of a night and day moment. You see that one connecting perfectly. And then the one at the very end of the round was kind of awkward. It felt yeah. forced. It came out. Three, two, and more or less, one. he just detonated. And then right up on the screen pops Envy finding a defeat or a defense. Yep. Not exactly the way you want to see the end of the round. That's a big spend. Uh, you know, Envy about halfway there on the majority of their ultimates. Midnight was the only one immediately ready. It's going to go down. Freeze God, though, peels off Random Newbie. Tries to get aggressive on this right-hand side. But SSG are able to kite backwards, and they're fighting from the point here with a 4v5 advantage. Enlightenment from Ares as well grabs a kill, and Rochelle is just guarding his entrances. They're already at 45. They're going to be at 50, 60% before Envy can re-engage. And that, honestly, depends on if they can even re-engage. I mean, they are going to be sitting up 72, 75, 80%. 
before anybody yeah, even wow. comes in here. A good and well-placed Grumpy Bomb is going to stop it. A great Dread Serpent is going to make him run away. It might just stop the Did he get the, the touch? He didn't get entirely. the touch. Wow, what a play from Mittau. The, the touch was there for Rubu if the Dread Serpent didn't come out in the perfect time at the perfect spot. So any kills here is just going to maybe dictate the way that this payload push goes. And right now it's Space Station Gaming getting the kills. And what a difference Freeze God on this Bomb King has made for SSG. And it's the willingness to pull it out. I mean, Freeze God has been a great Bomb King. He's a great blaster. We always talk about his EV. Yeah. We've seen his Drogos <laughs> do really, really well. And I think even he kind of forgets that he's good at Bomb King yeah. sometimes. But this feels like SSG if that yeah. makes any sense. Like this draft, I look at that and you could pretty much determine who this team is just off of that because when they were doing well last year, when they were doing well earlier this year, right. this is just the draft I'm accustomed to seeing with them. Even if you roll back to when these guys are playing in the PGS before they make it to the PPL, this is the kind of draft I love seeing them play. Right. And it just feels comfortable for them. Yep, Watching this Bomb King come through on one of his best maps as well is just kind of icing on the cake. And, and it's a great point, and, and I you know, sort of brought up Freeze, but I think Midtow has had some great Dread Serpents oh, this yeah. game. Uh, to secure that, that mid fight right there for SSG, a couple peels on the payload fight, things like that have really been firing for Space Station. It's that, that cohesion that when they first came back into this split after a little bit of a delay that was kind of missing, and they're, they're playing as almost a full unit now. And the one thing I think that works well, and, and this is actually more to, to their benefit than it is against them. Maldamba leaving the meta made me happy, yeah. mainly because it was like, cool, we finally get to see other supports. Granted, now it's just been kind of Genosphere all day. But Maldamba still has a home, and if you're willing to play him, yeah. he still plays at that level. Yes, you lose the damage amp, but you gain a stun, a tremendous CC, and fantastic healing. Right. And it fits Mittau's style of play so well that I think that's kind of the synergy that keeps SSG going forward. And, and is, you know, admittedly, as good as we've been talking about SSG looking, this is a great defense from Envy. Yeah. Because this, this the offense from SSG has looked unstoppable. So a great defense from Envy to be able to hold on to it. They are on defense, as a matter of fact, fighting inside of the Space Station base. Uh, no real flank potential, no real backdoor potential from Space Station. So, you know, all things aside, the defensive Stands for Envy have looked just as good as the offensive plays from SSG. They're going to have to change pretty heavily how they approach the point fight, though. Uh, Envy being able to find that big of a zone is huge for them. But there's got to be something else to kind of open up the door. I mean, that moment right there, getting rid of random noob, was pretty much the, the thing that just stopped yeah. them almost immediately. It then led to more kills, really good poppy bombs, really good control from Freeze God on the side. But they don't really have anyone in my mind that's like the go deal with the Bomb King guy. Yeah. I mean, if Pip goes, he's going to die. If Maeve goes, she's going to die. I mean, neither of them are really tanky enough to, to take him on mano a mano. So they're going to have to figure out who do we go with. Is it Rubu Rock? Is it Rubu right. Random? Tolki and somebody. Like, how do you deal with him? Or do you just change where you go fight altogether? Well, they, they at least have a little bit of resilience online. But Space Station 2 as well. Five for SSG, four for Envy. The item to own. Good wall. Zones out Toki. That's the you know, evil mojo that catches onto Rashad, but no kill. Dread Serpent as well for Mittau to just zone Envy back into that corner. Ares grabs the kill. Now re aggressive. Good seismic crash. Locks up a couple as Space Station Gaming looked to storm through the gates. And we're able to pop right back up. Large part and thanks to some of that resilience for them, but 42%, 45%. One more time. Enlightenment not connecting. As SSG still are in control. King Bomb at 93% though. Freeze God in a good position to potentially charge that up and use it here as they are traveling into probably the most dangerous territory to be against oh, a Bomb King it. in. But a really, really good movement and ult from Rubu to keep him alive. Almost poppies him out. Wow, he is playing on an edge there. Almost literally, Rubu gets the kill onto Freeze God though. King Bomb is going to be ready on the retake if there's enough time. 87% for Space Station Gaming as Rashao still holding down the point. Rubu on a tear on this mid fight, making a big difference. Four Team Envy, 93% for Space Station Gaming. But the Ash is doing it all for Envy right now, and now the zone is on for the red team. I mean, if they can get forward and do what they did on defense, they're going to make this work perfectly fine. It's going to come down. 
believe to this King Bomb right now to maybe reopen the door. Or maybe just a really good pick coming yep. down from the damage that is being dealt by the two DPS players here for them. Through time and space. Oof. It's going to clip for Chow, which is going to cause a lot of issues for getting back in here. Might stall this out. Ares finds the first kill and a stun for Freeze God, but he's forced to poppy bomb backwards. Oof. And Rock Monkey with some well-placed daggers gets a double kill on this retake. And an even better Evil Mojo locks up two, gets zero kills, though. Midnight drapes down one last time. Seismic Crash from Sadak. Locks up a couple from Team Envy as Rock Monkey hits a couple more daggers, but the kills, they're coming up for SSG. Keeps a 99 to 99. Nice stun coming down from Mittal to keep things rolling forward. They're going to have to find a kill, though, and big ones at that. Tulki alive in the vicinity and going to be able to hold on to this, as well as Rock Monkey on the side causing trouble. Wow. But it's Freeze God back and ready. When Freeze God stays alive till the end, he helps win his team that mid one last time. It's the Bomb King, big difference maker. I thought Envy did a pretty good job of kind of pulling back from the engage on that King Bomb, forcing Freeze God to poppy bomb defensively. Uh, but the longer that fight went on, it just seemed like SSG had the more effective damage traits. Yeah, and honestly, this is partially the damage traits going in their favor. I think Bomb King just hits harder yeah. than what they've been able to draft up. But it's also those moments that they have the two best point tanks with the best support behind That's a true. point tank on their team. <laughs> If your goal is to to out sustain them, you're not going to do it. And that's, I think, the biggest problem. Tulki being on con is really good for an all aggression composition. But right here, he's being dealt with. Rock Monkey was very big for Envy during that last point fight. But they have to change it out. They have to, to figure out something more than just him to make the rest of this go their way. Good point. With a minute and 28 seconds left, they're going to use some of that tankiness now on the front line. King Bomb rolling through, connects onto Rubu. A Dread Serpent flies as well. Freeze God fighting inside of his team's Dome Shield. Both of the frontliners are dead, and that's all they need. Space Station Gaming pick up right where they left off with Envy, and that's with a win. Really well played. Really good King Bomb at the end. They'll yeah, be able to great. come through. Good. Dome Shield in tandem with it forces Envy to choose where are you going to stand. Of course, one of the tanks gets eliminated almost immediately. So it comes down to Tulki. Where are you going to stand? And Tulki does not have the health to stand yep. anywhere near there. Khan kind of notoriously bad against Bomb King because yep. you can get through the shield and around the shield pretty easily. A lot of that just worked out good for SSG. And, and I, I really do look at that pick ban phase. Not that Envy drafted a bad team at yeah. all. But I think SSG, for their play style, drafted perfectly the way Jaguar Falls goes for them. And that grabbed them a win here in game number one. Same old, apparently, in this matchup. Game two, let's see if something changes right after this. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Premier League. folks uh <laughs> envy managed to uh you know unfortunately not grab that one it's gonna be ssg grabbing jaguar falls for two very different drafts i don't know how do you mm -hmm. feel that it went overall we talked about ssg needing to be kind of overly defensive to win that game and i felt like ssg kind of didn't really do that i mean they did in those more desperate situations but i felt like they were always kind of trying to find that opening on the side like on the very first mid aries kind of getting very aggressive through the dark side mm. playing into the pillars getting behind them not really much of an answer there for envy i felt like they were just stalling out too much with a comp that really has to be kind of going for the throat yeah they got to get in there and got to go for it i i will say you know 
Envy didn't get blown out of the water in terms of healing from what you normally see with a Maldamba and Nara combination. It's not a combination you get to see very often anymore, but it's one that when you do see it pulled back out, you get, you're kind of reminded, wow, this is one of the most potent you know, healing uh, frontline combinations that there is. Freeze God brings out the Bomb King as well. It's something that's been coming closer to being mainstream again. You're starting to see play on its maps that are super strong. You know, the Jack Falls is... Uh, the Bright Marshes, things like that. I think Breeze looked pretty exceptional on it. Any map where you can lock down a choke point is, it's so good for Bomb King, able to just apply a ton of pressure, basically non-stop, almost like a more direct dredge. And in the times where dredge was meta, you know those maps, he's gonna be good. Constant direct spam FRZ, also so good on this champion, doing a lot in terms of surviving. And we saw sometimes they were peeling for him, keeping him alive at 70 health. I mean, we saw a certain dominance from Rubu that both players walked away with, with double-digit HP, but yeah. SSG, because of that sustain they had on the board, Domba, double point tank, not really able to be burned through, I think that's really what flipped it around in the end. For me, Bomb King, I don't really know what it was. There was no massive balance change or anything like that. It was it just like the removal of health. I know some people mentioned the CCR card had a little bit to do with it, but this guy was, in fact, the king at one point. What happened to him? I think it's just other other champions being more preferable. Flankers having that extra mobility, it opens up so many doors for your team that you don't really want to fall back on a less mobile character unless it's a map where it doesn't really punish you that hard. Serpent Beach will be up next. A lot more conversation around mobility here than on Jaguar Falls. Yes. As well as I am... I don't know if Envy are going to make it their thing, but they looked pretty damn good on this map with Io. That was that one hell of a play. I believe the quadra kill for Mr. Hayes. Um, this is one of those maps that comes to mind in terms of I can dump the fox on the point and really kind of get into it behind the waterfall and fighting behind the waterfall on Serpent Beach. It's something that pretty much happens every round and it's something that I feel much better about doing if I can just go all in and 5v4 the enemy team with. And that's kind of why Io would be a, a good pick to yeah. have Luna on that objective and walk across that potentially if we see it. SSG have to ban both main power tanks, I would say, with Willow Maeve getting banned on Envy's side. If this Trix gets locked in, that kind of opens up the main two flanks for SSG, as in, well, the only other one left, yeah. specifically EV being potentially on their side. And I wouldn't be shocked if they take it, considering they have FRZ on their team, one of the best in the world, definitely up for that title. We'll have to see whenever yeah, we can get the king of the ring, more or less, <laughs> do get that. But very good on that character, and this kind of leaves Envy... If they want a flanker, they're going to have to go a little bit further down the down the oh, wow. tier list. And, and Buck, I think, would be next, Form up and on, at least on a vertical in. map like this. Yeah. Envy's not really a Buck team to me. It Who would is? Be random. <laughs> Who is these days? I mean, NIP. very few people playing Buck. Uh, he's been coming out in a couple of niche situations. What is left for Mr. Random New? Well, with one of the primary hit scan threats off the board, he'd be a little bit safer to play something. Uh, like a Drogos. I don't think Bomb King sure. is super great on this map. It's a little wide open, I think, for his taste. Willow being banned job. out. Drogos is kind of where I see him sitting. Leon is still available for SSG if they want to go that route. Another character that's, you know, she wasn't overwhelming when she was he picked heavily, and she's not Bring underwhelming now. It's just kind of, you yes. know, if the situation the calls for it, people cannot. grab it. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Drogos either. We could even see a return to the pip. Coming out from Envy as well. It's not that bad on this map stranger. either. Able to dead that Certainly polymorph. Not. Super good to collapse on. It Ooh, will nice call. be Buck. I mean, I, I'll be I'll be honest. I got a little production was in my ear at the start. It went Buck. Buck. And before the <laughs> draft even started. So I got to give props to them. You I'm got not Blake's take. take? Yeah, I did get Blake's take, and it was right potentially if they. I thought about that today. In. I was like, what could we call Blake? Oh, Blake's little P and P at the bottom. Yeah. Where he's just like, hey. Even if it's a P and P, it's like a little like NBA wired thing that says like. Blake's take. Like an MTV. Something. Yeah. That MTV like video fact you pop need up. Something. Yeah. That you can have. Something. That would be that. Would, I, I have a feeling he would abuse that a little bit too much. But Buck, gonna come in for them, and it's gonna. Odd. I, I really. I, have you ever seen random play? I mean, I'm sure I've seen him at some point, but when's the last time you remember seeing random? No, I don't. Buck? I don't have a. I don't have a memory. I don't have a memory recent. I don't have a memory old of him playing Buck. But I know that it works on the map. Yes. Um, I think kind of the reasons you stated earlier all make sense. And you know, it's it's world championship player, right? It's arguably one. Of, it was that was a very hard MVP call last year between Rubu and I think Random were really in the running for it. Yeah. 
Ruby or, or a random put Eevee on the map. There's no reason he couldn't put another character on the map. In my book, he's done it before. I think, again, all the reasons you said makes it. He's not making a big stretch by picking this here. It's just that we don't have that real memory of him doing it. It's a different. It's definitely a different style, though, for sure, of play. It, it's kind of, you don't want to take as many resources away from your team. That's why you play Buck. He's kind of <laughs> self-sufficient. Yeah. That means all the resources are going into Strix, who is going to be lethal, but how much do they really have to pour into him? They have Genos and yeah. Conchout? A poof. A poof of healing, and then <laughs> wish, you well. wish you then well. Wish you well, hide. Well, that's kind of one of, the, one of the things about Strix. He matches up kind of good against the flankers, right? If you're yeah. connecting all of your damage, Eevee's the one who's in trouble. Let's get it down to the casters for game two. Thank you, Nick. Taking it down to a little game two action between SSG and Envy. And Gore, our first look at Strix in this set. At least yeah. came around a little bit in our first set of the day. A hot topic, and, and even more so, our first look at Buck as well. Uh, so one kind of confirmed, very strong damage dealer for Envy in Strix. And then maybe taking a chance on somebody who has seen some good play in Buck. Two really, really hot talk talking points for completely different reasons. One, like you said, because Strix has been confirmed to be this, this top damaging kind of Dominion Three, two, of damage, I would say, for him. He is leading the pack. The only time he doesn't work is if he's on a map that's just especially bad for him, but on a map like Serpent Beach and in the hands of someone like Rock Monkey, this is going to be a scary thing to fight against. They're going to need a lot of pressure from the Eevee to make sure they deal with it. The Buck, on the other hand, again, this is one of his maps. This can make it work, and if he can keep Eevee at bay around uh, Sundial or Cassie, either one, They'll be perfectly fine. Well, the question is always, like, can you dive the Strix? And Space Station tried. They sent the entire house towards Rock Monkey, and he was able to peel himself backwards and grab first blood to boot. The offense continues here from Envy. They get themselves probably in control of the point for the first time this set. 54%. A lot of defensive stands in the last game. Freeze God. Now trying to return some damage for Space Station Gaming. That EV, I think, is going to play a pretty big role in this one. Slight pause as we uh, step away from Serpent Beach just for a second. Uh, do you think Freeze God plays an important role in this one in, in dealing with Rock Monkey? I think he's going to have to. I mean, it's one of those things. Random Noob is kind of bodyguard, where it's just, yeah. I have literally, shotgun, has a bodyguard skin. Right. I am going to make sure that you, EV, do not get to that Strix right. there. But if he's able to, if he if he trips him up, if he causes him to fall over, then all of a sudden you lose a lot of your rain damage. Again, sure. it's 1,200 for a body shot, 1,800 for a headshot from Strix. So you get rid right. of that, and all of a sudden it's opened up an, an entire avenue for Ares, who's now on the Cassie, to maybe move in and actually feel safe and confident in getting his damage out there. And, and you could see right off the bat what SSG are maybe thinking of doing on the, these mid-fights because... They sent uh, both of the front lines, a little bit of flank damage as well. And Rock Monkey was able to stealth kind of down and backwards, and the peel was there from Envy to keep him alive. Uh, but kind of that all-out aggression, it's interesting watching teams learn how to play against yeah. the Strix because you, you mentioned, you know, on maps where he's good, and I don't know if we've seen a map really where Strix where has not. been bad. I think you just have maybe to learn how to play much? against him. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, certain <laughs> areas where it's like, and, like, even Bright Marsh, he's good. He's just only good in, like, three spots. So you right. have to really fight for those three spots. And that's kind of the thing. Serpent Beach has a lot of spots for him to be mm -hmm. able to kind of roost up and be happy in. So they have to figure out a better way not only to get back to him, but sure. cause some distress for Rock Monkey. I also think it's, it's worth noting that they really need to figure out something that maybe changes their pathing. A lot of the fight is, right. is over here behind Waterfall. And Strix is going to just slaughter you there. It's literally long line of sight where it's right. a literal line you have to walk in. Even if he misses a shot, he accidentally hits the guy behind you. That's where they want to be fighting. And overtime begins with no Rochelle for Space Station Gaming. Health pool diminished with that kill from Team Envy. Slow burning overtime gives Freeze God the chance to move in and reset it. Buck Wild just for some peel. He is going to get some damage as well. On to uh, Sadak now on the aggression. But first point over to Envy. They complete the zone and get themselves a chance at an offensive push. Now, just thinking of a buck headshot with a luminary boost. Kind of scares me, yeah, just in general. And you can see him surviving a lot of good Dread Servant right here to try and stop this push where it starts. But it's Rubu who's coming out with the kills on top of it right now. 
And that's kind of the big thing for me to look at. Envy, this is the map, well, I mean, last week that they were able to beat NIP on. Yeah. This has kind of been their map. And this is the first time in, in recent memory that I haven't seen them start on Fish Market, which I think is a very, very big note for yeah. how much things have changed for them. Well, because Fish Market wasn't great for them last no, week. No, it has so, not been kind. You know, we're, we're here on Serpent Beach, but Fish Market's been Envy's kind of mainstay for a yeah. long time, and well, not a good look at it last week. So I wonder, you know, depending on how long this set goes, if they pivot back towards Fish Market at some point. Uh, they're already down one. So, you know, if they had their choice, they don't get to pick a map for the rest of the set. Yeah. We'll have to see where they pivot to here as Space Station Gaming continue with a good defense. Mr. Hayes trades out some kills. And a bit of a, uh, a quiet start from the Buck. Uh, but I would say now with a nice double kill, starting to do his job a little bit. And, I mean, he's been a very quiet, but in the perfect spot with a minute left yeah. for the push that he's exactly the kind of guy you need. He's also really, really adept around this point fight. And again, his job wasn't to go out and get kills, although I think random noob, especially depending on what cards he has in his loadout, if, he, if he's running to the same. And there it is, that leg day that comes through. Reconstruction, rapid sustain, those are your standards. Give me recovery, heal me more when I need it, as well as deep breath. Yep. But that leg day, just that little bit of 5%, for Heroic Leap makes it easier on Serpent Beach to jump around, yeah. ledge to ledge, or ground up if you need to kind of close the ground and get to the high ground, which for protecting your Strix or for getting aggressive into a Cassie Eevee, uh, I think almost necessary. He was getting aggressive here, Buck Wild used. If anything, he had to re restore himself around the corner. One more shot, maybe he's playing with fire here. As Freeze God drops down the Ice Storm, he's able to move his way, Heroic Leap out of that one. So the, the high ground trade, not really coming up for one team or the other. Payload still moving forward. Toki getting burnt down here. Sadak with the last shot. That could be game changing. Now that you have Rubu on the con trying to contest. A little bit lower of a health pool, a little bit less survivability as Random Noob looks to trade out with Freeze. God Restore gives him some healing. Just a couple more shots. One more from Freeze does it. Finally, some rest plate on the high ground. That's going to be a good defense. That fight, as weird as it seems and as... It feels almost unimpactful because how many shots from them are yeah. flying anywhere other than at each other. But whoever wins that fight, I think, wins the yeah. kind of following team fight. Just because all of a sudden you not, not only have the five-man advantage, but you get your flanker in a good spot there in the carry corner for SSG. And it's so interesting to see the dynamic of it because both of them have an ability that heals yep evies comes through with some damage immunity which allows random noob to reload which gets them in a good position to fire which a lot of those intricacies that come through it's one of those 1v1s that if king of the ring wasn't mirror matches i'd like to see that one repeated yeah. in a vacuum over and over again to see who comes out on top each time that was a fun back and forth to be sure that freeze god finally got the better of random noob Aggressive shoulder bash forward from Sadak. Trying to sniff out Rock Monkey, and they do. That's a big loss of presence now for Team Envy. Space Station Gaming are going to take control of this mid. And an aggressive dive. This time it pays off for him. And look how far back Envy now have to pull. Look at Random Noob's health. I mean, Freeze God takes just as much comparatively in return. But if you can, again, keep Random locked away, it lets Ares kind of go off the leash yep. and once you let him get aggressive i think the team fight starts to go more heavily in their favor also mitau yeah. is doing such a phenomenal job it's very unfortunate that sadak didn't land there because the healing from that range was amazing yeah it kept him alive just a little bit longer and a good void grip way in the distance you could see mr hayes prevented the assert dominance from landing from sadak and that second chance for the rest of his team to burn down with some damage was taken advantage of here's a reset where team envy are in control Flashbang used to not much effectiveness. 57% for Team Envy. Ultimate starting to fly down. Freeze God uses the Ice Storm. First blood onto Tulki. One more time. You're without your point tank. This time on the mid fight. Buck Wild for Random Noob. Countered out by the Assert Dominance. And wouldn't you guess it? SSG grabbed themselves point number two. I mean, before they even got pushed off that first time, they were at 96%. Yeah. Very, very good front load for them to be able to take control of that objective. Keep themselves in this one. And then good wall, good control coming down once again. Yeah. Even though it's not Inara Barrack, I think Ash on this map brings a lot of promise and control for the point fight. 
and Sadak was able to do a lot of that from the background, either pulling so much attention towards him that they didn't look at the Inara because it wasn't yeah. until he died that they actually pushed her off the point, or if afterward it's, I'm going to corral you and knock you back into this wall so you can't jump around yeah. and touch that objective to keep it in overtime, just to guarantee our confirm a little faster. And I think I, I still think that the uh, the aggressive dive forward onto Rock Monkey paying off this time was was big. I mean, you lose so much of that burst damage that that's why you pick a Strix because within the snap of a finger you can melt down high health targets. Overpower is another way to do it. Finally, Rock Monkey comes in to save the day. Ares killed. Sadak follows suit. So a minute and 20 seconds left, but this is still kind of precarious for Team Envy. I mean, this is a, a close choke point. You're really going to need your buck uh, with a lot of that vertical mobility. Strix, you know, kind of, he has to come out of the base. Either yeah. you go to your corner or up to the high ground. This is where you need Random Noob to really make use of that mobility and, and kind of change the dynamic of some of these fights. And as they get aggressive here, the question actually comes down to whether or not they want to push as aggressive as SSG was. Yeah. Because SSG held them back at the start. They were still around the point when it came down to what SSG were doing. Now, if you could hold them back or push them back that far, you could actually get this to regress around 65%, maybe 70% yeah. total. So you could get them uncomfortably far away so there's enough of overtime that they'd have to fight in in order to make it work. A lot of pressure for them. It doesn't seem like it's going to be working yeah. too, too well for SSG as of right now. Eyes kind of turn to Eevee as the timer gets lower and lower. 20 seconds left. She's going to be big at keeping overtime going. Pretty far away. They have both front lines for the retake attempt. You mentioned it. Freeze God can get in, get the overtime touch, and get a couple seconds to move the team forward. Who are they going to send first? Rochelle is half health, so he has to think carefully about how far forward he wants to move. Good healing from Mittal. Brings him right back. Better void grip from Mr. Hayes. Sets up the big kill for Tulki. Now you're missing one of your frontliners, barring a, a miraculous trade. And with Tulki staying alive, things look a little bit different. They want it, though. Assert dominance nearly came out. Countered out by a kill. Double kill from Rock Monkey. Secures the defense. And ties this game up. I honestly think assert dominance not landing there is a blessing in disguise. I, I think agree. I like the aggression. I like the mindset that SSG were in. I think maintaining their ults, keeping that 2-2, it's a dangerous game yeah. at that because anyone can win off of this round. But it just keeps you more in the fight than you were before. Now you have assert dominance, which admittedly didn't come through fast enough for you there at the end of the round or the first yeah. time he tried to use it in that round. But... It's just going to keep you afloat. Dread Serpent's coming up. You're going to have Seismic Crash. You've got a lot of CC, so Resilience is yeah. absolutely going to pay dividends five. as they pick it up. And you can see five strong here for Envy. Yeah. But One. it's still enough to, to find a kill, to lock them down and cause trouble. And, and Illuminate as well for wow. SSG. Yeah. They have it on their front liners, and that's the dynamic they've been playing. Similar here. They're going to send Rishao and Sadak pretty far forward. It's... Oh Sadak on the Ash, who's on this right-hand side. Four members of Team Envy holding the right flank with Freeze God flying around on the side. Aggressive dash from Sadak. Assert dominance up, down, no void grip used this time. Oh. That's because you got an overpower waiting. Sadak taken out. Sadak killed off. And the Assert dominance goes searching for a lot of value here as Team Envy they use three of their ultimates, still have two. You could peel with through time and space, but a great start to this cap for Team Envy. The inverse over there for SSG. They use two, and they still have three they've been able to maintain. I would say, I guess a certain dominance for overpower that early on is worthwhile. I feel like Sadak should have known that that was going to happen, and with that Dread Servant not really connecting on anything, Ooh. it feels like some sloppy ults from SSG. Well, there's no more ults for Team Envy. Seismic Crash down. For Space Station Gaming, Random Noob forced into the restore. Gets him a little bit of healing. Cauterized doing some good work there as well. Overtime begins for good Team kill. Envy. Sadak and Ares, though, starting to hit some of their shots. Rock Monkey forced back around the corner at about half health. So Space Station Gaming are going to retake this point. No fast cap for either side. And now trying to garner themselves up to 99% to match Envy. It's been a while since I've said this, but now acting as the sixth man on the objective. 99% forces SSG to stay in the neighborhood. If they do not pay enough attention to this, one stray foot by accident, Envy could absolutely yep. capture this. So you have to keep that in your mind. You have to play around it. And that forces Ruchao to play out in the open. That is not a comfortable position, even for an Inara with a Maldom. And Random Noob has been free and clear on the Sundial side. Gets the kill, gets the point cap. And 
well. Very patient play there from Team Envy to grab point number three and a chance to win the game with a payload push. Being able to come into this, now this round, this push, and know that you can win it is a little bit more invigorating, yes. I think, for Envy. You're coming up on a Buck Wild, on a Dome Shield, on a Time and Space, and a Flashbang. All of these are going to be able to be used very much towards the end of this, or if they hit any snags, to reopen the push. And really, the control, the only upside SSG have is the high ground that comes down. But yeah. with Random Noob being able to get up there, with him maybe causing trouble for Ares, that's really where things fall apart. Wow, the power of Buck on full display gets Dread Serpented in a 2v1, restores himself, grabs both kills, a third for Random Noob. Buck is running wild, and Team Envy a few inches away from grabbing game number two. One last chance maybe for SSG. Some questions on how it would look from the desk. Well, that's how it's going to look for this one, at least for right now. Very strong and nice very haze. well played. And a great shot to get rid of Rich out. Puts the dock on the chopping block. And one more kill onto the front liner. They're all rolling out for Envy here. Five strong, pushing into the base. Sadak in the assert dominance, the last ditch effort, trying to buy some time for his team. Ice block expires, four freeze god. One final shot from Toki. Double kill for the Barrack and win number one for Team Envy. Being able to hold on, Hayes feeling it after that one, slamming the desk as he comes through. Also an interesting setup, how far forward that monitor is for him. He sees everything and he knows all. He perfect yeah. through time and space at the end to help burn through Rachel. Reopen that one, just keep himself yeah. alive as well in that corner. He was locked down what seemed like for good, but being able to come through of that. Find that, keep Serpent yep. Beach as a map that is their strong point. Agreed. The biggest issue I have now is, is where can Envy go next? Because the rest of the maps haven't quite been as favorable for them. And that's kind of where the dominoes are starting to fall. And, and I think that this is great for Envy. You need a little momentum. Oh, yeah. Such a momentum-based team. You know, if SSG start to roll, things get it a little dire. So, so very good for Envy to grab win number one here in the set. Tie it up. Got a tiebreaker, Graham. Graham. Game three right after this. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Premier League. Buck and Envy strike back there on Serpent Beach. Managed to grab the dub, even up the set, ensure that there won't be any sweeping happening today. And then SSG is going to have to fight for this victory. They want to pry from the cold, dead hands of the man from the Flizzard Mountains. Mr. Buck, I mean, we talked about how he's good. He works on this map, but yeah. piloted by random news, just not something we've seen a whole lot of. He ends up, you know, top damaging through at least like the midway point of that game. And Capstones the game with a beautiful triple kill. What more could you ask for? I was shocked he was top damaging. Not because I, I was just like, oh, it's random on Buck. I mean, we, we said random's a talented player. If anyone can just pick up and play something, it would be him. But I, we just saw him kind of trading with FRZ for a minute and a half straight almost yeah. back and forth. And then damage comes up between. He is He's above his own Strix. That was just crazy to me. And it just shows the impact he was able to have. Six digits on Buck, not something you normally see, but... It sounds like fire. you really see on flankers either. Yeah. Typically, the, the class is defined by being opportunistic in its nature, that it can't always just have crazy uptime and get in there. But he's grabbing the most killing blows in the game by a pretty wide margin. Tolki and Rubu, actually, the next couple of closest. So you really want to look at, across the board, everyone on Envy having a pretty damn good game. Pretty solid KDAs there. I think the first pick, Strix, 
That's uh, it's starting to work. It's under a lot of pressure, but I think opening up doors for Random Noob to find a lot of success on his buck as well. I mean, Strix really is that good, and if you're trying to focus the buck instead of the Strix, it's going to open up a lot of doors, and whichever one you pick, the other one's going to have a pretty good game. Great performance by that's him the thing, the yeah. yeah. That's the important part is that if somebody else is getting focused, that's okay. Talk them through it. Make sure make sure they don't tilt off the face of the planet, but then everybody else has to step up. I just want to point out, I didn't notice that when the play happened. He got con shouted through the floor. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, he was helpful. almost dead, and then I think the con jumped and shouted him. He and did him look like he healed HP. up pretty quick there, didn't he? Yeah, he got con shouted through the floor for the full value, that's and that's good. the only thing that let that triple kill happen. like that, baby. That was great. That's some team play. That's, that's you think envy. he meant to do that? Yeah, must have. Oh, man. That's envy, man, though. That's the team play the craziness <laughs> that you expect to see coming out of a team that's been playing together as, yeah. as long as they have. Yeah, who knows what was going on down below there. I mean, sometimes plays like that happen on accident. But, of course, at this level, a lot of times things are thought out. And, and you can call for that, too. You know what I yeah. mean? Random can call for that battle shout. It's very helpful. It's something that is often overlooked about Khan. And I think I'm guilty of this a lot, too. I always think about commanders grabbing overpower. But battle shout... Such a beast of an ability, especially in a pinch, to be able to heal the whole squad for a thousand as a frontliner. I mean, come on, Khan. Cannot forget about the value that that character brings. And I mean, back in the firing line days, forget about it. <laughs> that ability I was. I try to forget the firing line that days. That ability was the kit and caboodle. Willow and Strix are going to take a seat first here on Stone Keep. Probably the power tanks alongside it. Frankly, Torvald rotating out of the band section hasn't had as crazy an effect, I think, on the draft as I probably would have anticipated because it seems as though it's been easy enough that it coincided with the rise of Strix. People have mm -hmm. just been plugging him in. Janos gets plugged in every once in a while as well, but it seems like it's primarily Strix these days. M more DPS bands in general, I think, just kind of has opened up why we've seen more of these picks. I mean, we've seen more know. Buck, Shaw, Vivian, and stuff. I guess that what days. that's what just happens, right? If, yeah. if Strix falls out, then it's just somebody else it, for we the most part in that spot. Fighters. And that's the way I the bands are primarily going to be. Maybe when there's more of them, we'll see more of them used kind of like tactically, like kind of claw yeah. and chip away at certain little things and certain you know, strategies that you don't want the enemy to have or you want to kind of lead them into. But that is all... Uh, Hearsay at this point. We're still on four bands total, two for each team. Barrick first pick, though. Kind of one of the reasons why I like this in the first game. And, uh, a, you know, for that conversation we had about Ruck, is I think the same can sort of be had about Barrick and Rochelle. Yeah, for, for sure. I think Barrick, a great pick on this map, especially in the hands of Rochelle. But being able to play outside and have a point tank, that can apply pressure to every way you want to come out to contest him when you're holding that church, I think, is, is a huge boon to the team that, that wants to be locking those areas down. Good kind of a similar night. response, though, from Envy, just getting their preferred off tank for the map, getting their flanker that they want for it, too, and it opens up SSG, too. If they want, they could end up with another Inara Barrack draft, but they want to be a little more flexible, a little more damage boost oriented. The Cassie's not banned this time, so they want it for themselves. Both these teams have drafted You're very flexible early game draft, or flexible early drafts, not early game. I, you really don't know which way they could go. SSG could transition this to a triple DPS. They could grab up an Ash and kind of finish it, you know, more standard. I think Envy picking Mave up early instead of going straight into EV kind of, you know, has that somewhat illusion there that is it going to be Rock? Is it going to be Random? Which way are we still going to go with this? I'm needing to reveal a little bit more here as Envy picking their uh, third and fourth characters. But even still, right? It's. A healer and a frontliner. You knew that was coming. It just didn't matter when. They still have that ambiguity, I think, going into that final phase of the draft, and that's a pretty uh, inherent strength. You trust that's why, that's why teams always stranger. like to last pick their, their second DPS, because there's just so many. I mean, it encompasses the entire damage and flank roll. There, there's so many things you can do. There's a Ruck. Flexibility, though. Ruck is potentially Keep coming in for SSG. Should be... I think pretty good at dueling on the sides Holy here. Holy F, man. That verticality, though, <laughs> on this map in general will let him dash in that high ground, land in the middle of the back line, and pressure a lot on Envy, depending on who they pick up. And it can't be. There's no way. Uh, we see this on Jag, for sure. But here, regardless, I mean, an iconic SSG draft. Yeah, I don't, sure. I don't know sure. what I would. I don't know what I would change. I don't know any character 
that any of these players would be more comfortable playing. This is a security blanket draft. For and sure. frankly, you know, this isn't exactly not iconic on the side of Envy either. I would, you know, Mave to Rock is not super, super connected, but I think he can play. And again, the strength of that pick so early was that either Random or Rock could have played it. And with the final DPS about to be locked in, that sort of reveals that, okay, it's going to be Rock this time. Random's going to go there. But if this was a Leon, then you might say, okay, that that's going to be Rock. And then Random's going to play the Mave. Very strong drafts. I think both is the goal? are, again, are iconic for their teams. Yeah. SSG slightly more. I mean, do you, do you have a favorite at this point? It's hard for me to say. I, I actually think I would side with SSG because I like the drafts that play outside of the keep a little bit more. And to me, that's what their draft is, is screaming. I don't think you want to go inside. Does that, that mean in sustain. church when you say that? Yeah, or? in church. Okay. Yeah, basically in the keep, which is the high ground, or outside of the keep, which is going to be in the church, poking, trying to keep them locked in while getting objective time. I personally think that's usually the better strategy for mm. the map. And that, to me, is what SSG's draft is going to be aiming for. Stone Keep, one of those fun maps because there is a lot of ways to approach it. We just watched Serpent Beach where it's it's largely the same every mid fight, but yeah. Stone Keep is far from that. An iconic draft for SSG and a lot of the same for Team Envy. I cannot wait to see how this one plays out. I couldn't pick a team to win this one if you had a gun to my head, so let's just get it down to the casters and see how it plays out. Couldn't agree more, Nick. Game three hangs in the balance of the players themselves. I think both of them have put their best foot forward for Stone Keep. And, and Ruckus rearing his head for the first time yeah. in this set and, and one where not surprised, or I am surprised that it's taken this long for Ruckus to come out. And I think that's the, the biggest thing. I mean, on maps so far where he could be pretty potent, this was not the one that I think would come up first. I'm used to seeing him, I think, even more commonly on Serpent Beach sure. than I am here. But it is going to be Sadak coming back to this. The Rocket Barrage picked up for him. That's going to be coming through. That's good damage that's going to be yep. added, along with the Luminary that will come through. It's as close to triple DPS as you can get without going triple DPS for Space Station Gaming. And much like the desk said, both of these, granted the Mave maybe not the iconic pick yep. for Rock Monkey, but both of these feeling iconic for their teams. Well, this is the second time Rock has been on the Mave in this set. First one was a little uh, here and there. Some great stands there on Jaguar Falls for him, but uh, not the win. So they're going to look to change that here. Church side of the map for SSG. Keep side for Team Envy. Random Noob is not complaining about that. Hits the long range fire spit. Rock Monkey right there with the daggers to clean up the kill. First two for Envy and point control. A couple of good shots from Aries. Might be able to open up the door. Random Noob. Random Noob is dooming them in a way. I mean, a, a one fire spit, one yeah. dragon spit that can come through in the right area kind of slams shut any chances you had of getting in there. Overtime is on for Space Station Gaming. Right back onto the point. Rochelle finding the first blood onto Rock Monkey's big, but Tolki answers right back onto the barrack. So big health discrepancy in that trade as Sadak now on his own having to stay alive. Random Noob unleashes a salvo, but Ares with some bolts of his own, cleans up the kill. 60% in climbing for Space Station Gaming as Team Envy at a 4v5. Just gonna try to stall out. And already Stone Keep hangs in the balance. And the blast through the shield right there. Dragon Punch gonna be coming through. That should be a kill, but no, I think he's too far away to oh. actually connect with it. He's gonna fall back. He's gonna get killed off for it. And the through time and space may have just peeled out the Dragon Punch. One for one trade here. Freeze got dropped the Ice Storm. Team Envy. The last ones in touch range, they come out with the point and some extra damage on the back end of the fight. And being able to find it, they've got Freeze God almost locked down. Sadak in the other corner, looking pretty low himself. One more hit will do it, and Tolki is going to find it with maybe a bigger hit than they really needed, yeah. but it's going to get the job done, so you can't really complain Hello, about Hello, Tolki. Mr. Triple Kill on the Inara, and that's just to get this payload moving forward. Great mid fight there from Team Envy. What looked like it could have been dire, that Dragon Punch flying right through, through time and space, kind of peels him away. And then he ends up getting cleaned up. He has to kind of fly upwards, Random Noob does, but uh, well fought back there from Envy. A good Dread Serpent from Hayes as well, kind of peeled off from the mid. And now we get to see their hand at uh, the offensive push, an area where both Drogos and Maeve should be able to make a difference. Potentially able to... 
I was going to say open, open things <laughs> up for him. I was watching his health bar there. Unfortunately for him, teetering on the side of death this time around. Dragon Punch not Ooh, connecting. Nice shot. Didn't really change too much yeah. for Envy and the, the grand scheme of things. Maybe slowed it down a little bit, but that's about all they did. Now it is absolutely imperative if he uses it for it to connect. Granted, 30% back on charge for someone who charges ult as fast as Drogo's. It's not the worst case scenario, but you get yeah. a kill right there. It doesn't really matter who, you just make it a 4v5. You can trade your life out for it. It just gets your team back to the objective yep. and gets it rolling again. The rest of the kill snowball from there. Mid Tau is just going to get staggered out. So now Team Envy, they spend the Dragon Punch and an Overpower just a moment ago. Grab themselves a good team fight as they begin their march forward again into Space Station's base. 35 seconds left, so maybe only one or two more tries. Get out carefully, Ares has to play. Dread Serpent as well here for Mr. Hayes. Peels off to the side a little bit. Sadat gets caught out. Rashao with an important trade back. Onto Rock Monkey. Off tank for DPS. Take your pick. Space Station Gaming still in a good spot. Payload though moving just a little bit closer. 10 seconds left, give or take now. Hitting that final timer. In position to grab overtime, you can see Tolkien just around the corner, staying out so he doesn't take as much damage as possible as he rounds and walks up. But they're in position for SSG to be able to kind of burn down. I think a lot will depend on Sadak right here. Goes really deep yeah, wow. and is going to pay for it. He dashes forward a little bit too far. Ice Storm one more time from Freeze God. Peels off the right side entry from Team Envy. Tolkien throws down the waters field, getting some good healing from Maldamba. But Rochelle has just a little bit too much damage. That's all she wrote for this defense. Space Station Gaming tied up here on Stone Keep. A lot of good kills for them. Yeah. I think the flow through at the very end. Some questionable decisions as to where they're diving. They they have some jumps. I mean, Sadak specifically has been jumping very, very deep in the line for some of these. But... There's a lot of moments that that aggression is what is nice. going to, to give them a win, right? I mean, being able to come through right here, it doesn't work towards the very end of that payload. It gets them a defense. That's really, I think, where the dividing line is going to come right. down for SSG is just they're taking the gamble every single time. So far, it hasn't paid off. But they have been keeping people on lock. Tolki, Rubu, Rock Monkey, really good rounds. But Tolkien getting a triple kill, you can't count on that every single time. <laughs> you certainly can. And so I think the fact that they're locking Random Noob down, the fact that they're kind of keeping this at control, a 1-1 yep. is a perfect scenario for SSG. To make good, Tolkien looking for one more seismic crash, connects on to Barrack. Rochelle drops the Dome Shield just to stay alive. Rock Monkey caught out. No more target for him once the Dome Shield drops down. Hexafire as well ripping through from Space Station Gaming, but Tolkien's able to throw up the wall and walk backwards mitigates a lot of SSG's ultimates there. It's a one for none trade. Mr. Hayes through time and space nearly caught Rubu. Rubu doesn't get the kill. Sadak finally cleaned up by Random Noob. It was nearly a disastrous overpowers. Another Dread Serpent down onto the low ground. Gets Rochelle rocket booting himself away. 72% now for Envy as SSG look one more time to retake. Some really good rockets there on to Mittal. It's going to force him to be uncomfortable. Unfortunately for Envy, you don't have to be in the fight, really, for Genos to work right here. But a really good salvo spit combination. Going to be able to get some good damage down. They have to deal with Sadak, and they have had no issue with that all game. Yeah, the, the ruckus has been just kind of stopped for Space Station Gaming, or against Space Station Gaming. Over time, though, melting away here. Is Rashao, who's down on the point, tumble forward from Ares. Shield goes down, and so does Rubu. Retake is here for Space Station. Double kill from Freeze. Quiet game from the Eevee. Dragon Punch not going to find a target. Random Noob just trying to escape. And it looks like for maybe one more time, Space Station have retaken this mid with 75%. Envy should get one more touch in this. And they're going to be coming around the corner. Rubu up on the high ground. Should wait, honestly. Yeah. You don't want it to get to 99%, but you don't want to rush in too soon. He's going to be able to come around, get a lot of damage onto Ares, and already start this off on the right foot. Sadak gets the first blood, though. And now Rubu with no cooldowns and no yeah. health. Freeze God cleans that one up. Sadak maybe getting traded out by Random Noob. Mr. Hayes throws down one last ditch Dread Serpent, but Toki has no health to contend. And Space Station Gaming, they go down 99%. 
and retake that mid and go up here on Stone Keep. Being able to come back into that, a lot of good ult usage, but a lot of good kills from Richao of all people. It is yeah. this Barrack, honestly, that is saving the grace. 50,000 damage on him. Third on his team. Ares is still getting the numbers out there, but Richao is kind of finalizing those hits. And that's the other thing. I mean, if Sadak is going to go three and eight, Someone else oh, no. has to step up and be big for the team. Yeah. And if it's not going to be your off tank, which admittedly in this matchup, Rubu, Sadak are, are the guys to look at, then Brichao, Ares, Freeze got. They have to start going a lot more positive. And in that round, they did just that. That's true. It's kind of like different slash lines, same story for Rubu and, and, and Sadak. I mean, Rubu has had a little bit easier of a time staying alive, done a little bit better of a job of it, but you look at three, nine, and six, and the fact that Space Station are, are still doing well, just been too much focus on the Ruckus and not enough elsewhere almost. I think it's it's kind of a key. I mean, you look at it again, you can't count on triple kills from your front lines every single time. Really yeah. well played from Envy in a lot of those scenarios. Rubu was four and one coming into this round. He's five True. and four now. Just got himself another kill to be able to pick that one up a little bit, but that's the, the difference. That's the key is he's getting focused out just as much this time around. And I'll admit, I mean, so far today, he's had a pretty good performance compared to what we've seen the last few weeks, last few times they've played. Yep. And it's definitely been shot. essential to them finding their comfort, their victories, if they yeah. find them. Any map wins are the ones where Rubu's feeling good. But if you trick Agreed. him up, if you trip him up just slightly, this team can fall apart. It's been tough sledding for the off tanks. Dragon Punch rocking at about 50%. That number drops down to like 25 now. I think he's found a target maybe one of four times we've seen a Dragon Punch. Uh, whether that's just Peel, whether that's just looking for one more better option. Ares stunned out by Seismic Crash. Good there from Tulki to get rid of the Cassie. A lot of damage now lost for Space Station Gaming with 18 seconds left. Maybe get one more shot but without Midtow to sustain your front lines. Looks like Envy one last time, or one more time rather, on the defensive end. We're going to be able to tie up this game. Depends. Freeze God has oh. really low health. Is going to be go. able to get a little <laughs> bit of healing from Blink. But he doesn't have the cooldowns thanks to the kind of forceful effort of Envy to get him out of there. Nothing to get him back onto the payload. So they're going to be able to lock him down, at least for a little bit. Rachel, again, right there on your screen, was a big portion of that round. It was kind of in tandem. Ares was hitting a lot of these shots to, to kind of connect the two of them together. But it's all coming down to this front line. This barrack has been the story kind of of the day of the last few weeks. Right. And Rachao on barrack is just such a good combo that if given the, the appropriate amount of space, can do a lot more than what it has so far. 60,000 damage is very solid, but I mean, we've seen today he can beat Strix if you give him the proper timing yep. and pacing. So good on Envy to, to focus them down as much as they have. I think Ares, if we're kind of continuing that damage chart discussion, has the quietest 100,000 damage, 20,000 damage, right. highest in the game that uh, you know I have maybe seen. I mean, he is five and six, but he's got the damage at his back. Difference maker for Space Station Gaming. This is an important mid fight. Whoever caps can win the game with a successful push. Red Serpent from Mr. Hayes onto the left-hand side as Ares continues his assault from the high ground. Forced back, our Envy. Random Noob dying is a big loss. It's now Space Station Gaming with a chance to zone. They've only burned the Hexafire. They're going to have four ultimate score to defend with. Four ults. It's a pretty, really, pretty solid way, I would say, to start things off. That's a good through time good and space deal. from Mittal. And that's going to be able to keep his team in this. Dome Shield getting forced. But it's going to be able to zone out. Tolkien's too low. Yeah, what a beautiful counter out there by Midtow. Rock Monkey just needing a couple more daggers. Finds himself a double kill as Random Noob kills Midtow for the final clean sweep of Space Station Gaming. Three kills for the Mave. Keeps Envy in this one as good of a start as that was for Space Station. Envy, just some individual play, helps break that mold. Now they have a couple ultimates to defend with. Now the only thing that SSG can come back in on this is uh, Scout, and that's not exactly known for breaking down walls. It might be able to keep Ares CC immune while he still has it until the next update. But for now, it's going to be interesting. That is the fifth, sixth Dragon Punch that has just gone to the wayside. I have no clue what Random Noob's trying to hit. 
but at this point, I have sincere doubts that he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. Unless it's happened off screen, I've seen one Dragon Punch actually grab a kill. We'll have to revisit that point as Toki misses the seismic crash thanks to a kill from Freeze Got Sadak as well. Gets the healer from Team Envy. This is all SSG all day. And they're going to grab point number three with a chance to win. Uh, but we, we pivot now back to the yeah. Dragon Punch discussion. You know, it, you kind of have to put a magnifying glass on it. I think we're looking at one connection and, you know, five maybe that not necessarily didn't hit, but he's chosen to, to kind of pull back. And the only sincere issue with that is, is it comes down to these chases where if you're fighting a 4v5 or if you can make it a 4v5 on the point, right. your team's in control. Your team is pushing right now. And, you know, a couple of missed Dragon Punches in a full game, that's not a big deal. But when it gets to the point where your percentage is under 30 for, for how many yeah. are connecting, that's when it starts to, to really raise some eyebrows and, and become an issue for your team. I mean, this is one of his essential picks. He has been on this champion for years yeah. and been able to perform well. It is just so bizarre to see them going so awry. Or maybe it's just SSG hearing the call for it and being yeah. able to play and pay apt attention to him to make sure that he doesn't get them off. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a couple, little bit of one of them beat. was, like, peeled off by Mitau. There's hey. a connection. Random new back on the board with the Dragon Punch. This time it's going to help them on defense. There was definitely one through time and space that kind of peeled off for it. But, yeah. uh, you know, a couple maybe his health's too low, chooses to, to pivot backwards. But at any rate, he does grab the kill there. So a better start here for Team Envy. Space Station Gaming, we're going to take control of this set with a push here. And, you know, the, the ultimate talk, it's important to look at. they got four ults to do it, 45 seconds left, and not a lot of ground to cover. And, well, just enough points on the board to make this a winning push That's if right. they can make it in, too. There's going to be a Hexafire on the side, at least to try and open things up. It's not finding a lot of damage right now. But it's going to be enough to help find a kill. And with Tolkien gone, this payload's going to start inching ever so slowly forward. Dome Shield as well, drop down, maybe through time and space, ends this game as Rochelle grabs the most recent kill onto Tulki. Mittal spreading out the healing very well. Rochelle down on the payload, keeping it close, throws down the shield as well. Ares forced to dodge roll out or to the rest of some damage, but Freeze God on the opposite side gets aggressive, gets the kill onto Rubu. The Rocket Boots keep Rochelle alive, but just for a second through time and space That's connects onto Tulki, and that peels off the payload and SSG grab themselves win number two. That's good awareness from Mitau. The entire time I'm watching that fight, I'm just looking at him like, when is it coming out? Like, you have nothing to lose here other than maybe tying it up, but they were able to find that angle. He was waiting yeah. essentially for Tolkien to go into the channeling. Once Tolkien starts up his ult charge, yep. he's just like, this is a free shot for me, and he's going to be able to go through it. He's the only one standing between SSG and map number two for them. So very, very solid call and very good play, even though, again, very quiet from a yeah. lot of their members. I think Midtown has had a great set so far, lots of those ultimates connecting. Now the question is, where does Envy go? It's their map pick for game four. Let's see after this. I now, powering the control room for the Paladins Premier League. Back, folks. SSG striking back there on Stone Keep with a somewhat peculiar draft that I want to kind of dive into a little bit. But again, iconic top to bottom. Every single one of those champions very heavily associated with every single one of those players. 
And something that you and I kind of were talking about backstage a little bit is is this first pick, Barrick. Yeah. And what that is kind of meaning for this meta is, you know, as Strix makes his way in, Torvald made his way out, a little, you know, stuff's kind of up in the air. A lot of times it's been Khan or it's been Ash that's been that first pick. But for me, it's like I don't really care about which one of those I get. You know, I feel good about getting either. Whereas Barrick, I feel like he hangs in there with Inara on the point but gives you that flexibility to do something other than, you know, just being the point front line. I mean, more so than hanging in there, I think he's been dominant recently. His his win rate is, is really higher than hers. I think hers is down in the 40s somewhere. Yeah. Or if not just the, if not the high 40s, but he's got mobility, Eric, man. Yeah, he's, got, he's so oh. much more flexible. So so good at applying a lot of pressure. And I thought Tolkien had a phenomenal performance this game, but Rashad's ability to sustain on the point was a pretty big deal. Both him and FRZ having the positive KDs on space station. FRZ doing a doing a great job too, but yeah. we can't ignore the presence that that first pick Barrack was able to give them. You know, it's kind of when you factor in two level four bowling ball shields. When you factor in, look at the look at bottom left right now. You see these little 180, 180, 180. It's like that adds up so quickly. You throw the two 900 shields on top of it. All of his mitigation is coming. The barricade as well. All of his mitigation is coming from all these different sources. So it's hard to like feel frustrated by versus like in an art earthen guard where the health bar just stops moving and going down you're not doing any damage anymore it's like you're still doing good damage to barrack but he's just getting so many sources of mitigation from all around him that it's it's kind of wild when you when you think about it and then you throw the dome shield on top of that which is frankly you know you can't pick up resilience and just have that ultimate not matter anymore. Yeah. dome shield matters at all stages of the game nobody except lex can just barrel their way through it and you can go ahead and pick Lex if you well, want <laughs> in the barrack. Well, in two months, we might have someone that can deal with it. Oh, man. That, that's going to be fun. <laughs> that that is going to be a good the time. The Cataclysm just immediately deleting the Dome Shield. Be, will be interesting, but Dome Shield, it's such oh, a Oh, does good it kill shields? Yes. Oh, no. And deployables. Oh, no. Yeah. And that's, oh, man. I'm not going to lie. I saw the, I was watching the notes. I was, like, headed to that meeting right as, yeah. right as Raw. I was sitting there for an hour waiting for Raw yeah. to kind of <laughs> pop up on the patch notes show. I'm with you now, Chad. I'm like, give me the character. And I left, and I was watching all the GIFs and the videos of, of the dash, thinking the dash was the ult. And then you guys broke it down for me, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's not even the ult? Like, yeah. that would have been crazy. This character, he's bringing balance to the forest, baby. We got this little anime fox girl, and now we get some some man meat, some metal in the cast, and I'm here for it. <laughs> he's, he's really badass. <laughs> he's so cool, so, so cool to watch play, but... We're not going to see him for, for quite a bit of time. Won't be available Many for Many moons. This is the world's patch, so we have a bit of time until that happens. But something that's going to be happening again and again is going to be Willow being banned. Even on a map that's as open as Timber Mill, where her Fae fight might not really be able to get the same amount of value. Oh, yeah. this is, Timber Mill's been uh, kind of in, a, in flux recently because normally, at least I feel the... Snipers have been always in the top of the conversation, but because of that, flankers and specifically like Eevee almost would take precedence over the snipers. It was a very like ban one, pick the other type of situation when it came to those snipers. So then Eevee kind of became the next best thing. Now with Strix taking the step up that he has recently, he will still reign Cut supreme. For you, Bob. And with Buck already, you know, surfacing in this set, he's not Only something I, I think Envy is going to stay away from. If SSG have to do it, would they play Buck? Uh, even if I said no, yes. I mean, I will freeze. Say that because there's been a draft in the past where yeah. I said, hey, play this. And they went, I think we will play Buck instead. Oh, and then, uh, speaking of weird flankers. I don't know if that's going to be what they lock in. Just because he has no vertical mobility on this map, which is pretty vertical. If they get Buck, it can be all right moving from one. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. It, it can be okay moving from one high ground to the other, but the problem is, without a high amount in leg day, he can't really make it from the low ground to the high ground. He kind of just barely crests. You'll see him pop up like a little bit of a whack-a-mole and then go back down. Yeah. You can't really make it to pressure the high ground. You kind of already have to have your own to, to make it work. I don't know if we're going to see him. We might see a double backline control style of strategy from SSG. Uh, but they only have Barrick and Genos, and that's flexible. They still have a lot of options, yeah, a lot of directions is. they can go. It's a deadly one-two punch because you just don't know which direction it's going to go. Barrick and Genos go together like peanut butter and jelly. However, Strix and Eevee on the same team on Timbermill is a big problem, I feel, yeah. for SSG. 
having the con as well. Frontliners are kind of an afterthought on Timbermill to me, but the ultimate that is overpower just always is prevalent in a team fight, right? Yoinking one particular character that's kind of being a pain in your side, whether that's Genos or whatever else SSG have left to draft. Khan is a great way to contribute to a, a team fight that is, for the most part, happening uh, kind of all Are around you, you and above you as a frontliner on Timbermill. Buck is coming. Buck is here. Oh, I, I'm yeah. surprised they picked it so the big early. Honestly, I guess that's the thing that they knew that they wanted. That, that's normally what you do when you have both DPS slots up. They have yeah. both their DPSs. You pick what you know for sure that you want, and then you can flex your final pick based on their response. Interesting that Buck would be the one that they fall to, but... Again, he has that, that verticality that a lot of flankers kind of don't gods. seem to have. He'll be able to do that the as long as they can control not. that middle ground to give him that little bit of extra height because he just barely won't make it if they don't. And now you're I left with the conversation. The Probably, of the wild. I don't know. I feel like Leon or Cassie. Leon's got the range for sure. Cassie's got the ability to kind of chunk through the Inara, the Khan. So I guess it depends what you want that character to be deployed to go do. And at the moment, hovering the Cassie, spotting out Strix with Scout as well is very helpful. Yeah. Help set up that buck to dive it effectively and get it out of there. Go Zing! It's first pick. It's been working as first pick as well. This character is worth, I think, uh, all the conversation he's been getting uh, on Twitter and other mediums of communication. Strix is kind of the talk of the town. Kinesa is completely... Out of the table. Not because any change to her, really. It's just yeah. the uh, relative <laughs> increase in strength. That was once upon a time a pretty even matchup, but Strix dominates it now. We're here on Timber Mill. A fun map with a lot of new stuff. Another buck for you, but this time played by SSG. Let's get it down to the casters and hear what they have to say. That's right. The, uh, the buck swaps sides here. Looking for another win for SSG this time. I like the Strix for Envy. Yeah. I mean, they kind of have an inherent range advantage just because of that Strix. A lot of times you'll see the 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 Genos try to kind of snipe out yeah. the enemy Strix up on the high ground. Going to be a lot of fun to watch that dynamic unfold, though. It's going to be big, I think, if Rock Monkey can go big. But Buck, again, he's been playing Bodyguard, and he can play that either in your face, bouncer style, or yeah. keep it down like the Secret Service. He'll do either one that he wants to. And if he can jump around... You know, it isn't reflected quite as much here, but, you know, those walls that are going to be kind of keeping Rock Monkey, one, from having permavision on everything, but also having some cover up there, kind of in the sniper's nest. A bulk up buck in your Five, face can four, cause a lot of three, trouble and distress two, for a sniper. One headshot, yeah. especially with the luminary boost, again, it's the thing of nightmares. And I'm interested to see how Freeze God kind of positions through this early fight because... Is it a buck? I, I don't remember. It was, it was another example of like an o only one team had the sniper and it was Strix. And then they ended up just diving the high ground over and over. It looks like he tried to make his way through there. Maybe towards the teleporter. Caught out. Going to plug away some damage at Tulki. who throws up the wall, but not going to separate him from any of SSG except for maybe Rashao back on the barrack. He goes random noob. First blood in this game on a Sadak. An important trade is Envy now. Forced forward, rather, Space Station Gaming pulling back as Envy retake control at 30%. I don't want to call it passive from the flanks, but not being as aggressive, not in your face. They aren't getting uh, as far forward as I kind of expected yeah. from both sides. Neither Buck nor Eevee until just now really have crossed that midline. And even Random Noob is still kind of skirting it very carefully as to what you can imagine. Like, there's just a line slicing the map in half. This is the first time Freeze God has really pushed past it. Both of them just kind of hovering around the objective. Yeah. And admittedly, if you're not going to get into the sniper's face, this is the other way to do it. Just stop the tank from standing on the point. And he, he's done the ladder where he's just making Tulki walk backwards. Random noob. We're going to get aggressive on a Sadak. Rock Monkey from the high ground wins the range duel over Ares. Couple shots into uh, this buck for Freeze God. Will set him down. 99% for Envy turns into 100 on the back end of some good control, some better kills. And now Team Envy are in control of Timber Mill. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, Ruckus is actually the thing that doesn't sit well with me on this draft from sure. SSG. I think every other champion in this map is going to fit very comfortably. And I think Ruckus has his place. I mean, obviously, you sit up here. This looks like a, a central tower defense map, essentially, for him. 
but it's just not as comfortable. I mean, he doesn't sure. feel like he has the same gusto that he would on, say, a Serpent Beach or on any of the other maps that we see him be very prominent on. So coming through, I think Sadak is kind of playing against the waves as someone who's going to have to kind of pick this up. And I just don't know yeah. if he's going to be able to do it. And I think it depends on the first hex of fire and kind of how it goes into the future rounds. We've seen a lot pivot from round one to round two. Well, he's got to position himself, like, very specifically. You know, he likes kind of high ground shooting down, but you have Rock Monkey on a Strix firing against you. I mean, that's not a fun matchup to hold. Uh, so up to this point, hasn't been great for Sadak on this Ruckus. Only one point of kind of data for us to look at there. Flashbang does connect but no angle to follow up with any damage. Minute and 10 seconds left, stalled out at the moment for Team Envy. It's gonna be tough here to fight back into a buck. There's a good example of Mittau just casting out the line, trying to catch Rock Monkey with that through time and space. Doesn't this time around. With 55 seconds left, SSG are gonna lean heavily, I think, on Freeze God and Ares yeah. to find some good kills here. Mittau is gonna have to do a lot of work to, to get that ult back. One of the best things you can do early round is stop Rock Monkey, either from being in that position or from getting that shot that does find the snipe. So maybe a little bit of pressure on him to, to charge that up. 30 seconds left after about 20 seconds have passed. He's just now hitting 40%. Probably not going to be there at the beginning of the next round. We'll have to see how much overtime Envy can hold to potentially help him out there. As right now, they're setting up in, well, <laughs> SSG Sniper's Nest, and they are not making it much further past that. Yeah, I love this uh, kind of three versus two zone that SSG are actually winning. Buck from close range. I was going to say against a Strix, but that's not really the case. I mean, if, if Strix can get a quick scope and then swap to his pistol, I mean, he, he's a long range champion just by nature. Good void grip to prevent the touch. I mean, I guess just because he's a sniper, he's long range, right? But I mean, yeah. if you're good enough at hitting the quick scope from inches away, he can be a face tank champion as well. You can do anything and everything if you really, really want to try with him. Uh, yeah. But again, a little bit of skill in there. Top damage for Rock Monkey. Two, one, and three. Not too surprising on a map like this. Nice wide open area. Long range most of the time. It's going to be able to be his yeah. benefit. And kind of surprising to me. I mean, it feels like Freeze God's a little lower on the chart than I would have expected him. Still fifth, still above most of the tanks. Three, but two, he one. wasn't as aggressive, I yeah. think, as I expected. It kind of feels like one of those picks that they've practiced a little bit, but maybe it was a pick because Envy did well with it earlier and because Envy are willing to go to it. It's kind of a, we've practiced it a little, yeah. and we don't want you to have it, so we're going to pick it and be okay at it rather than that you have it and be ex especially good at it. Next with the, the net shot there as Toki drops down Seismic Crash. Next on to Sadak, but he goes into the Hexafire, pulls back, but right into an Ice Storm from Random Noob. Now Freeze God trying to defend Rochau on this barrack. So impactful has been Rochau. Defensive Dome Shield's not going to find any offensive or really control value. Maybe just saves his life. Buck Wild countered out by the Dread Serpent there, and Envy, they're getting themselves in the kill feed, and only Freeze God's able to trade out. That was... Just a comedy of errors, it feels like, from, yeah. from Freeze God. Just the way that he was going around that doesn't fit the champion that well. And I think it's he's trying to play incredibly safe as though you were any of the other flanks he's played. Maeve, your Eevee, you jump in as either of those. You have to be ready to get out, or it has to be guaranteed you're going to get something out of it. Buck's not like that. Buck is jump in, go Buck wild, and then heal yourself through their damage. Like, there's so many ways that I think can make it work well. And it's just not clicking so far. And the same thing goes for this Ruckus. Again, not feeling it as much on Timber Mill. And, and so far, Sadak and Freeze God have had pretty quiet games except for the defense, which admittedly, that's not where you need to be loud. Like, it helps, but you'd yeah. much rather be winning the mid fights. And I think kind of conversely, Envy, their DPS is having probably the best game of this set so far between Random Noob on the EV and, and Rock Monkey on the Strix. Much better showing for the Strix this time for Team Envy. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't successfully push, but the mid fights, they have just got figured out. And, and maybe it's not so much what they're doing, but what SSG are not doing. But Envy are going to feel okay about that. 
But this is a start to a good defense from Space Station as they move themselves forward. And I think Midtown, to kind of revisit a point, has been looking for a lot of those through times and spaces up onto the high ground, but I think he's yet to connect. That's a big difference yeah. maker in these fights. It's just the, the difference of, is Rock Monkey there? Is Rock Monkey not there? Sometimes it doesn't even have to be Rock Monkey. Maybe he gets rid of Random Noob. Maybe he gets rid of Mr. Hates if he aims yeah. it properly. There's a lot of good targets on the side of Envy to get, to get eliminated and maybe set your team to an advantage. And unfortunately, he's the only one on his team that feels like they're going for that advantage. Like, I feel like Freeze God, if that doesn't connect, I want to see him on top of Rock Monkey. I want to see him causing so much trouble yeah. for the Strix that even if it costs him his life, he's at least not letting Strix shoot out the Chow. Right. But most of the time we've seen these fights, it's these side rooms. That's where they're happening. Envy kind of come in, I would say, more or less reluctantly because they don't need to fight there. They'll just stand on the objective until they win otherwise. I feel like it's it's been a, a gamble that we've only seen Timber Mill a couple of times, but... Either you kind of leave Strix and hope that you win the rest of the fight quickly and then you can kind of get up to the high ground and deal with the sniper. Or you try to dive the Strix and, and do the opposite, win the fight afterwards. And Space Station have just kind of been floundering between the two where maybe they identify Strix, maybe they try to win the team fight. Uh, for the time being, though, that's all kind of mid-fight focused. This is more of a defensive standpoint for Space Station. That's the uh, the stealth advantage there. Freeze God had to come to the rescue of Sadak, but without any vision on Rock Monkey in that stealth, he was able to clean up the kill. So it changes the dynamic of this final push. Maybe a little bit Ice Storm down from Random Noob. Freeze God forced to jump out, has a restore for himself. Three seconds left. Overtime's going to begin. Ares and Random Noob, though, trading one for one. Good shots being able to find that Ares. A couple of kills towards the very end just to keep himself rolling, keep the team rolling forward. I think it's a lot better as a whole for SSG. Just to get someone online. I mean, wow, that was great. Ares is not who I immediately think of when I think SSG needs someone to carry them right now. But at this point, somebody's got to step up to the plate. If he starts doing well, typically that leads to Rachow doing well, which right. starts to open the door, I think, then for Sadak. Who, I mean, five and seven, four and six, it's not the worst slash lines you're going to see. Right. But it's too many deaths for these champions that are coming down, these bottom two. And admittedly, what I would say are the kind of heart of SSG, at least from what we've seen in the past. And so if they can pick it up, even just one-to-one -one for this round, I think it's a, a big difference. There you Here's go. Pick. Mittal, this time, grabs something with the through time and space, and it's maybe the best target he could have gotten. And now this is going to be a different dynamic, a different look at Space Station Gaming. Look how far forward... They're playing now the Hexafire in a perfect spot to grab the kill with Ares onto Rubu, and Rashao has been a force on this barrack throughout this set. Nobody back on the point right now, actually being countered out. Maybe a little too overextended. Space Station Gaming thought they had more room than they had because Team Envy are now winning the fight after the fight. And with Sadak, the last one contesting, they were only able to get 57%. I think the only thing you can say for SSG is that I'm really glad this is Envy's map pick. If this was their map pick, and they kept making some of the errors that they're making, it is not a good sign. And I will yeah. also throw this out there, because I'm assuming they'll do some VOD review. I don't know how much commentary they listen to when they're doing those as much as they are probably writing down furious notes about what they're doing. Yes. But go back and practice this map a ton going into this. I mean, showing this, especially teetering on, on the edge. If Envy win this one, they have a very distinct lead in kind of solidifying yeah. themselves as fourth place in the PPL, which is an auto-qualified to the quarterfinals. And that means SSG, you need a timber mill or else some of those sets during qualifiers could end your run here. It's true. It's a long week to have to play through. Not over just yet, but Team Envy apparently feel very good. I mean, they lose Rock Monkey, and it was a totally different look for Space Station Gaming, but just too far forward on that mid. Got caught out. The retake was better from Envy. And then back to the same old. They had Rock Monkey in the spot that they wanted him. Didn't have the through time and space to kind of equalize that range battle. And Envy, now a chance to win the game, tie up this set, and bring it down to a best of three. It's all going to come up. I mean, at this point, it comes down to them. SSG have to start going big. There's going to be three big kills for them. And that's 30 seconds, almost 40 seconds, that they managed to burn down and burn through. Nice little stagger as well on the Rubu. 
just to keep them uncomfortable, but... We have not seen this side of this map at all this game. Yeah, I, th <laughs> that was actually the first peek we got at it was during that little push they had forward. I just get that aggressive all the time. I don't understand what you're waiting for. There's, like, nothing that Strix is going to do that he isn't already doing to you at range. Right. So get in his face. Cause some trouble for him. Otherwise, you're just letting Rock Monkey free fire from the back one. Well, they've been praying for those three times and spaces to connect. Only one or two have throughout this game. Two for two trade here. That Envy are going to end up tilting back in their favor as Mittau is the last to drop. So a minute and ten seconds left. Envy fight back. The question of, you know, ultimate usage now arises. Space Station Gaming are in an awkward spot where they kind of have to use some if they want to extend this game. And Envy, they'll feel okay to maybe save for the next mid. Yeah, I mean, Envy are in a very comfortable position. Also, depending on how much further this gets without any contest. This flank. They could 100% go forward with this. Try to seal the deal. Random noob finally going to go down there. Ares, credit for the kill, but Sadak kind of driving that one home. Texafire ready. I just want to see something big out of him. And that's the uh, the sneaky ruckus flank. Rubu, big kill on to Ares here. 28 seconds left. Plenty of time for Team Envy. Health bars melting for Space Station Gaming. You're going to be five, six seconds staggered out. There's the dome shield from SSG to try to extend this game. Freeze God playing a little sniper of his own, hanging further back. Random Noob drops down the ice storm as well. Tulki gets the kill onto Rochelle. 10 seconds left. And SSG, they're defending without a frontliner for five more seconds. I mean, they're going to try to do whatever they can to walk this in. Ares is already low. The shield force the dog gets burned through, and his health bar goes with it. It's all down to that ruckus, and he's not alive. Not enough health. And Team Envy, they grab win number two on Timber Mill, tie up this set. And now you maybe <laughs> you look back at the maybe a, a microscope on the ruckus there towards the end of the game. Once, uh, once your front line goes down, not enough health to really contest. Yeah, I think Ruckus, he just doesn't flow on Timber Mill the way he flows on other maps. There's a time, maybe two plus years ago, I think he could have been able to kind of hold his own, but a lot has changed in two and a half years really yeah. for it. So Timber Mill, maybe not quite his map. Still kind of confused about that pick. Also, the play style for the buck just didn't hit for me. Yeah. It just felt too passive from Freeze God. Like he wanted to play it like he had an EV health bar, but... You're sitting at EV and, what, like two-thirds, essentially, right. 2,600, 2,300. Get in there. Go fight. Do something. Yeah, the buck maybe just not there for Space Station Gaming. Envy are able to grab win number two with a now a tie-breaking game five on the other end of this break. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Premier League. Welcome back, guys, and you learn something new about Willow every day, don't you? Yeah. That was a great game there, of course, evening up the set. Envy do grab the fat dub here on Timber Mill. Great stuff from both sides there, uh, but I think some of our ma more major talking points weren't even really revolving around Strix, who's he's been the hot potato bouncing from first pick to first pick today. Uh, we wanted to kind of talk in a little bit more about Tolkien's and our performance and Mr. Hayes on Mount Domba. I mean, 
for me, I said going into Timber Mill, the front line is rarely ever the story for me yeah. on this map. But Toki just found a way to stay involved and stay relevant in all these fights. Yeah, he was he was always there, always getting tanked up. And being able to survive on the point on Timber Mill isn't the easiest thing in the world. No. It's kind of a no man's land. You're constantly getting spammed at from a lot of different angles, trying to take down the pressure from that Cassie and the Buck on the other side. Makes it hard, but in our Zamba, the classic combination, Toki was able to really just stay alive through a, a lot of it. I mean, tanking 130,000 damage is, is nothing to ignore. It is a huge number, one that we often overlook, but one that has to be harped on here. 130k taken, 110k for Rubu as well, but 12 and 3 is part of the more impressive part about all of this, right? Tracking down these kills, especially when each single instance of your pellets only hit for 250. It's hard sometimes to grab those killing blows just goes to show you how even with all of that still with the 15 assists high kill participation overall knowing when to get in there and do the dirty work it's hard getting in there and capping on mm -hmm. your timber mills your fish markets it takes that sense it takes that communication with your healer about when it's time to go and when it's time to try and get that value yeah, and being able to always be in the right spot too. As a Nara, you lack the mobility that Barrack and, and Nando have in terms of repositioning yourself, but just being kiting away, getting tanked by Hayes, speed spirits from Domba this is makes it, it so yeah. much easier to reposition. It's why it's such a classic combo. That's the one-two punch that, you know, both of them needed each other. And the sum of the parts is greater in this case, man. They work together so nicely, not only to use this movement speed to get around the map, but the Dread Serpents set Tolki up. In a lot of instances, look at that. That's that Tolkien in there, man. He's the one fragging out the front line as well. Of course, Rubu there when he can be as well. But with such little mobility, it's very important for these two to work together. It's one of the oldest pa or pairs in Paladins of the Damba and the Inara. It's the, the cause of some of the highest healing numbers we've ever seen in the game. But those two pairing so well together to really bring a, an <laughs> you know, an uncommon sort of win condition for Envy. Normally, we're always talking about snipers. We're always talking about flankers bouncing from rooftop to rooftop. And under the radar, these two managed to really be a huge part of that win on Timbermill. Yeah, and it being on Timbermill is a big part of it. Honestly, Tolkien on Inara, it's a classical thing, and we're used to seeing him even pulling out stuff like, like Summit. Mm. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have even been shocked to see him bring out Summit and just go onto the high ground where Ares sure. is, you know? Yeah, man, that's a fun one. It's always been kind of one of the cheeky things about Inara's kid is always talk about her as low mobility, no vertical mobility. Sometimes in these niche scenarios with the right loadout. The day that came out was the yeah. funniest day to play Paladins Did that ever. come out in OB64 yeah. when you could scale it up to like a ability just No, I think it was Inara. right before. Or right, no, it was right after. It was right after. Uh, it was like the OB67 undoing of everything. Where it was still, you had a lot of the shenanigans, but... Uh, tuned down in some respects that was a dark time for some fun time for those of you that made the best of it but we're all tied up here at two apiece folks one for ssg followed by one for envy it's really just coming down to you know map picks these teams are winning their map picks we're headed to bright marsh this was ultimately if you want to go to that callback again to the world championship last year where envy was finally able to take down ssg in game seven maps in my opinion Start to become a little bit less of a polarizing factor as you head deeper and deeper into the sets. You know, theoretically, all the teams involved are kind of feeling less strong about the maps that, you know, you're looking at for games five, six, and seven. So it's really <laughs> important kidding? to get a good draft as the playing field is pretty much equalized and going to be the largest determinant of the victory. For sure. And SSG deciding. Uh, weird. Oh, you never see SSG first banning Maeve. Uh, Eevee, excuse me. Kind of a strange, yeah. weird, weird thing for them, but clearly they want to target out random, get rid of that, not Good have to night. deal with it anymore. Because, I mean, it, they, they were definitely having trouble finding an answer, I would say, I think, throughout the Timber Mill. But they want their Cassie mm. instead, get Airy something he's comfortable on, and maybe play into the flexibility of FRZ just a little bit more. Is BK a factor here? Is this where this is all headed? Banning out the Eevee? I think they would have to pick it soon, because I feel like Envy might just... Take it. Nobody's like snatching up Bomb King right now. Mm -hmm. I think Drogos is still plenty good enough on this map to where he would be the premier pick for either Noob or for Freeze. You are not welcome here! I don't know. Here. It's just kind of a thought. I don't really have a lot to back it up right now, but that's just like a hunch that I'm getting. Uh, it is the Furia snap there. Uh, not an Arakan, so Furia Khan. 
Fury is definitely taking a little step back, too. She was really in there for a while. I don't know if it was just damage reduction or damage amp kind of became less flavor overall, but she's not being grabbed quite as often. I think damage amp going down a little bit where you have less to stack means that damage reduction and raw sustain gets a little bit better. It's kind of why we've seen like the, the Grover, the, the Io, the Ying, just the raw sustain healers along with champions that kind of have their own bursts of survivability. You have Enlightened on Leon, Cassie has her Somersault, Maeve has DR and her Pounce and all that different mobility. All that stuff, I think, leads into what has created the meta and what it is right now. Strix also just having stealth to get away and mm. doing so much damage, he doesn't Come care on, about your damage reduction. Fight. He'll do the equivalent of two shots on a Cassie if he hits you with one shot, more or less. So, good by them. And Envy drafting a fairly flexible draft. I think you can play defensively or aggressively with it so far, and their last pick is definitely going to determine what I way that's going to I will fight to protect the sanctity mm. of the wild. Hovering the pip wouldn't... Wouldn't really surprise me if they locked it in, and they do. Let's go well, they ban away the Eevee. They take away the pip, likely leaving random with Drogos. It, it, it could be. It should be Drogos. Could also still be BK. I think it would struggle a little bit more into yeah. the Cassie pip. For There's sure. really nothing that you know owns Drogos too hard on SSG's lineup, so I think it's a good enough pick. Uh, but again, banning the Eevee, taking this pip, which is, like you mentioned, good, but not common for SSG. You have utmost confidence in Freeze's pip. Why have they headed this way in the draft? I think the sustain of Fury of pip plus the aggressive ultimates they can use, they have so many ways to just go. I mean, you can inflame and weightless in with the pip along with an evil mojo and nothing should survive that if you're if you're sinking upright. <laughs> a lot of sustain plus a lot of pressure across the board from them could Neil. be solid. And hmm. They actually bypass we'll the pivot. Drogos to get the Leon, put random back on the flanker. Might be a little bit better into the pip, kind of stop that weightless aggression that they might have been able to do if they didn't have That's that, that yeah. consistent backline. That moment of survivability, like you mentioned, the Enlightenment's got to be the best turnaround ultimate in the game yeah. for now. 50% damage reduction is still a lot. That's where the Leon's ultimate is headed. Ultimate... It's still pretty damn good here in this situation. Yeah. It's an interesting pivot from Team Envy, and what I like about it is with the way the bands went and what SSG picked up, it's like I get the sense that I'm being led into this pick. I'm not gonna, I know you want me to pick this, so I'm not going to do it. Envy go with a, a last-second pivot that I actually do kind of like just because I don't want to feel like I'm walking into a trap at that yeah. point if I'm Envy. SSG, we're cooking something up. Let's see if Envy are able to counter it out. Gormizer, at, at a minimum, we got a game six on the slate for us. Two more at least, but first, game five to kind of determine who has the edge going into that one. Some fun picks here yeah. for Bright Marsh. Get a little pip for SSG, uh, and then they kind of point out the last minute pivot. I, I was kind of thinking to myself that Leon wasn't picked or banned out. You know, Rock Monkey has been fine on the Mave, but I like this look a little bit better for Team Envy. Uh, but talk about a team fight from SSG. Hit the inflame, hit me with a seismic crash oh, yeah. and an evil mojo. Uh, that's a snowball just waiting to happen. Suite of ults definitely goes to SSG. The, the biggest question marks uh, kind of confuse me. I don't know if I've ever seen Freeze God play Pip. Great play. I'm actually not sure I've seen it. We've been watching SSG for a long time, so it's going to be interesting how that fares for him. I can't imagine it's going to be too different than some other blasters, but he does have some intricacies in his kit that make it a little more difficult than just your standard pick up and play. You're going to have to know a little bit more about him, exactly how far you can jump with weightless, how much damage you can have, the angle, the drop, everything that kind of factors into all of these shots and his damage. It's going to make a big difference at the end of the day whether or not yeah. he can make it work. And a, uh, a big difference here is that Ares you know, Envy were in a great spot. A double kill from this Cassie. Looking for three, maybe four around the corner. Mittal grabs that one. A couple more shots into Tolki. He's going to get Ares his third kill of this mid, and he finds it. And after a great start from Envy, Tolki won the tank. Kind of engagement on the point, and Envy were in control, but just better side control from Space Station Gaming. Grab them 81%. I guess also that interesting dynamic. It's not always Freeze God. I mean, Pip has been and is a carry on this map and can absolutely make things work for himself. But Ares, if he goes just as big, if not bigger, this map than we've seen on any of the others, that's going to be able to change a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of bite and then bite back yep. from these teams. As you can see, random move, Rock Monkey kind of teaming up to burn down three. 
And so it just okay. comes down to who gets that, maybe even that first bite, sometimes that second bite, depending on when they happen, will will change the pace and the flow. Well, that overpower was the second bite after Rock Monkey matched Ares with a double kill and then won for the delayed triple. Back to the point now, Space Station Gaming. Still Evil Mojo in hand. Freeze God got very aggressive after that mid cap. Jumped right in. All right, so the first piece of that puzzle starts to fall for Space Station Gaming. Maybe look for an Evil Mojo, but for now, the Inflame is enough for Rashao to find the first blood. On to Random Noob. Void Grip countering out Commander's Grab, but Rubu's in a bad spot and gets cleaned up by Ares. Now Space Station Gaming pushing with a numbers advantage. A lot of good shots. Ares going to be picking up a lot of kills throughout this one. Freeze God tacks his name onto at least one of them. And they're coming close to this last corner. They still have plenty yeah. that they actually had to push in. But with a minute and 15 on Bright Marsh, plenty of time, plenty of space to be able to control it. And, well, their ults, again, sweet of ult-wise, they have, in my eyes, just the better ults from top to bottom. So it depends on how they use them, when they use them. That might make the big difference. Especially if, you know, you drop the Dome Shield, which is going to buy them some space. But if Space Station Gaming are just kind of free to back off, I mean, you burned five seconds and, and regained a little space control, but down to nine seconds, Evil Mojo connects huh. into the back line. Nobody there to get the kill just yet, so he's no longer a chicken, no kill. So a dome shield goes searching. So does an Evil Mojo, but a seismic crash does connect. Tolki, first one cleaned up by FRZ. Being able to find that big ult thrown off to nothing, but 25% already recharged. They come around. If they can get rid of Rubu, that's going to be some space. But the wall, the only thing kind of keeping them alive and safe right now as the burn is actually getting kind of flipped right back onto SSG as opposed to them after using two ults moving forward at all. And this is where, you know, I think he's dropped down. Now, so Rock Monkey's still on the high ground. And Flame up so frequently, maybe one last time in this round as Space Station Gaming start to storm the gates. A flank from Sadak gets Rubu as Rashao now back into the fight as well. Through time and space, looking to connect, does not. But Random Noob with a return kill onto Sadak. That's a big bit of space there for Team Envy, but they lose Rock Monkey again. Rashao throwing his name in the kill column. FRZ grabs one as well. It's down to Tulki to stay alive. Too much AOE damage. Stunned up is Tulki. And in goes the payload, and up 2-0 goes Space Station Gaming. Well played from them. I mean, being able to kind of keep that consistency in flame, helping reignite their push and keep them moving forward. But, I mean, it was, again, kind of a battle back at the very beginning of that round. Envy, even though that was a 2-0, definitely still have more than enough in this yep. race to, to kind of excel them through. Comeback mechanic on their side now. It would not surprise me to see this go 2-1 if they, if they come through. But we had talked about it. You said Inflame comes up so often. 67% there for that ult. 88 oh and 85 for the Seismic Crash and the Evil Mojo, respectively. So a lot of good things that are still on the horizon right now for SSG. Envy, yeah. though, they're kind of feeling the pain. I mean, Midnight, Enlightenment, those are the ones that are closest. They don't have much to fight with here. Yeah, Space Station Gaming used their ults later and will have them earlier in this round. Random Noob kind of dueling with Freeze God is an important dynamic to look at shots. as well. And, and it's tough. You know, you'd argue that Random Noob would have the upper hand in that engagement. I do not think I've seen that many connections on someone wow. in the middle of the air with a pip. Wow. Uh, ever. Honestly, it just does not happen often. There's your answer about and Freeze so, uh, God on yeah, Pip. Yeah, <laughs> he can make it look real good. He knows the angle, and he knows that that's like some, some extra math. The curve on your bullet versus the fall speed of a Maeve right. and whether or not she's got her second jump. There's a lot oh. that goes into it, and that a beautiful double evil mojo. And he's looking for one kill and at least grabs one, but Rock Monkey actually the Void Grip allowed Freeze God a bit of a flank there. Rock Monkey slid his way in there. Didn't see a pip waiting around the corner because he was up in the air and Freeze God putting his mark on this mid fight. I don't know, Gore. Space Station looked like they're just going to run away with Bright Marsh. Yeah, this has definitely been a notoriously difficult NV map. It I has think been, they. Yeah. I'm actually not sure. I haven't been tracking it as closely as I have, but they, they have one to two wins maybe on this this phase. It has not been the, uh, the number one NV map, I guess is the best way to word it. And so, better suite of ults, better luck on the map, SSG so far. Being able to drive this one home about 45% of the way left before they can fully convert this 
potentially find themselves a 4-0 and, and a leg up in the set. That's an early dome shield again from Toki, and at least this time it does push SSG all the way back. They're going to get staggered, lose all of their momentum. Double kill from Rock, double, double kill from Random is going to wind this clock down with space right back on the mid fight. Four Team Envy don't want to bite off more than they can chew. Overpower, another evil mojo, 50% of the way there and climbing on Inflame. So the tools are there for SSG. They want to break this one down, but Envy with some ultimates of their own are going to look to just stall out, delay the onslaught from SSG a little bit longer. Well, there's going to be a certain dominance coming through from Envy, trying to make sure they don't lose any ground if they can avoid it. But, well, it came with an overpower yep. into Sadak just finding a double kill. So... Not quite, I think, what Rubu had in mind when he threw that ult out. It's going to allow SSG to get back in here, get back onto the payload. It's regressed a little bit of the way, so it's still got a good distance to go. But with yeah. 50 seconds left, again, enough time to convert, enough time to go around these two bins. Yeah. And they have a good suite of ults, four of them still available for SSG. And they have nothing to delay with immediately for Team Envy. No assert dominance or dome shield, and that's what you need to delay this payload once it gets closer. So keep your eyes on that. This payload gets very, very close to going in. Another double evil mojo from Freeze God, followed up by the Inflames. Wow. Sadaka, big double kill here. Random Noob is going to try to delay the fight with the Midnight, but is Mittal going to win this engagement? He does on the back line. 15 seconds left. Team Envy staggered out, and SSG could just run away with Bright March. So I'm going to have to throw this out there. That was with Midnight at the start of that fight. Mittal wins that, even though Random Noob, arguably with a lower health bar, had an advantage going into the fight. A lot of things playing for and against him in that. As of right now, Tulki gone. This is, could still go in, but they lose Freeze God. So it's up to Ares to deal the damage. Now. Important daggers there from Random Noob. Double kill from the Maeve. Still on the edge. Khan void gripped up. Mittal with another kill. Rock Monkey on the edge. Enlightenment connects for a double. And that's going to be the triple and a defense for Envy. Could not have come a moment sooner. And SSG will be denied for the first time on Bright Marsh. Normally, I, I would go on about how much that's going to be helpful for Envy and, and how much they can do, but we've seen how shaky they've been at the very end of these, uh, or for any of these mid-fights so far. They don't really have too many ults coming into this. I think a certain dominance should be coming up, Dome Shield. Yeah. I don't know if he was able to charge that, or if he used it at the very end. But through time and space was thrown out. And, I mean, you look at what SSG have been able to do. They've been charging these up incredibly fast on the turnaround. 99% for Sadak, 83 for the Inflame from Mittal. And, yeah, just on the horizon here is going to be Tolki. But 1 in 10, 0 oh yeah, 8. These tanks the are not having a good game. I am sad if I'm an Envy frontliner right now. I mean, you got four resiliences for your team, everyone but Rock Monkey. Overpower, Sadak dunks Rock Monkey. The only man without resilience. Not that would have made a difference, but an interesting thing to look at nonetheless. Random Noob with the only saving grace for Team Envy on this one. And now they're flipped around a little bit. This is a good spot for Freeze God. Now with an Inflame at their back to maybe take this fight to Team Envy. And it depends on how aggressive they want to get. You can see Ares kind of testing the waters. I think it's much easier for Freeze God to get in, get out than it is for Ares. Yeah. Even with Somersault in the loadout, it makes it precarious when you get too low as a Cassie. Random noob with the midnight going once again for Midtown. This time around, yep. he's going to take the trade. Gets a little bit of retribution onto the back line. Evil Mojo almost ready. Just a few more shots. And another flanker going against another healer here. Freeze God is able to get that this one. He's not back. just yet. It's brilliant from Team Envy to try to retake. Finally, Freeze God gets Mr. Hayes cleaned up. There's no one really left to heal because everyone from Team Envy are winning their individual engagements. Now Rochelle back in on the fight. Midtown. Respawns right back into the fight, catches one more death. 97% for Envy, kills are all for them. Likely point number two here in just a moment, but a great evil mojo to maybe retake. Unfortunately, the tanks are not healthy enough. Sadak's going to go down. That's about all they could do there. They throw out that evil mojo. They keep themselves maybe afloat for a little bit, but Envy just more resilient throughout all yeah. of that. I mean, good ults coming down from the Guinness. Their dominance and Tome Shield charged up and passed. This time went through. But twice in that that fight, twice, Envy was able to send someone back yep. and deal with Mittal. First time around, Random Noob gets away with it. Second time around, they just ignore Rachau and walk straight to him. Rock Monkey goes in and gets, gets rid of him. Once your healer's gone, especially someone as potent as Furia, 
that it's not a, a back breaking yeah. defeat, but it pulls out the floor from under you and you are falling, 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 and they I think hit the ground with full force. This Envy push is actually looking pretty great. Rubu, an abysmal start for the Envy front lines is starting to look a little bit better. Unstoppable for random noob. I hope that listening back, SSG, don't listen to Caster Audio because the moment I said they're running away with Bright Marsh, Team Envy have maybe flipped this game on its head. It's a defensive in flames. So Doc's going to grab the first kill. Rubu is going to take that as his exit cue. So you get a kill, you buy yourself some space, but with a minute and 13 seconds left, Gore, not too much for Envy left to do. Rubu went from, what, one and seven to now on an 11 streak? because he's been burning it up, so he has definitely changed his impact on the game. Tolki, not lucky enough to get the streak burning, but still lucky enough to help turn this around. Dome Shield about to come up. Cert Dominance already up. The two front lines for Envy are the ones that can make the big difference here, although Tolki's taking a ton of damage back there. He's going to be able to get out with his life, but that's going to prolong this a little longer overall. Yep. SSG definitely has some good footing and, and the ability to collapse and push this 3-3. Doc is at about half health on the right. Frontliner's taking a beating for Space Station right now, looking for just a little bit of healing for some extra uptime. Evil Mojo flies on through, connects with one, but no kill for Sadak. The follow-up was there on the Tulki, but not enough damage. Rubu dashes himself in. Random Noob just looking for a couple extra daggers. Mr. Hayes grabs the kill. Ares dodge rolls forward. And against all odds, Gore, we got a .7 in a game that looked like SSG were going to win convincingly. Yeah, Envy are pulling it back. Rock Monkey was a huge reason for a lot of that. A, a good consistency that comes through once you put him on something like Leon. And he has been burning bright for them. Five volts strong here for Envy. Freeze got having just popped that evil mojo. I mean, he won't have it. And, and if you let Rock Monkey off the hook, if he is going into the back line, if he gets rid of Midtow, if he challenges Ares... I think right now he's in a state where he comes away with that fight. Yeah, he's all smiles there in between rounds. This is a big one. This is going to put you on set point, this mid-fight. Point seven on Bright Marsh is going to get either Envy or SSG. Win number three, one win away from taking the whole thing. Rock Monkey on the right-hand side finds Ares, plugs some damage, slides right back through. Rubu and the rest of them starting to get aggressive. Some good damage set up by Hayes and the dominoes fall. Rock Monkey random and Tolki, but what a great answer back from Space Station Gaming. The frontliners now in control of the point as Rubu holding on to that assert dominance. They're able to weather the storm. A great start from Team Envy. I honestly think the, the frontliners for, for SSG might have actually just hurt themselves. Sadak fell back. Rachel was still in a position that now he's staggered no out. Overpower. Five seconds without an Inara. They only have Sadak to rely on, and he's, his health bar's too low. He can't really get in here. And that's a great assert dominance. It stuns Ares Enlightenment for the double for Rock Monkey. And now he's just looking for some extra targets. Make it three for the Leon. Mr. Hayes getting run down by Rochelle, but 99% for Envy. Nobody in range to contest. They're going to turn around Bright Marsh. They're going to grab win number three and move one win away from their first win over SSG this year. I don't know what mental shift they had to do, but whatever they did when they are down 3-0 in that one is something that SSG are going to have to do now that they are down 3-2 in the set. It's going to be a very difficult road to climb. That is a very big win yeah. for Envy. Both of these teams ride a lot of momentum, ride their feelings and emotions from game to game. So now Envy, I mean, again, back against the wall, really good performance coming down from Random and yeah. Rock in terms of kills, but a huge turnaround for Tolki, yeah. a little bit, but Rubu definitely being able to be more impactful as that game went on. Yeah. That Ash just flipped on its head. Talk about polar opposites. I yeah. mean, you you are 0-10 and 10 specifically for Tolki after the break. We'll look at post-game stats, but I imagine it looks a lot better than 0-10 oh, yeah. and 10, uh, is where he ended up important win there for Envy. If you get blown out of the water 4-0 on Bright Marsh, I'm not sure you come back. You go down 3-0 and come back four straight points, you're feeling pretty yeah. good about More game six. For SSG. And that's what we'll have for you right after this break. The Paladins Premier League is brought to you by Evil Mojo, developers of Paladins.
Welcome back, folks. That's two in a row for Envy as they put themselves on set point after grabbing Bright Marsh. And what was a pretty fantastic turnaround, Kresnik. They looked like they were about to get dusted 4-0. Managed to kind of survive and turn that one around. One of the inherent weaknesses of Pip is that it does eventually kind of fall off in a couple of ways. Yeah, that and the Fury of both really weren't able to keep up, I think, with the sustain. As that Cauterize and Wrecker got online, Khan taking a lot of pressure. Very tough for them to, to kind of withstand and... They definitely were, they were a little more liberal, I think, at spending ultimates on their defense. They did use the Evil Mojo a little late, and I don't think it was the only thing that led to that final mid-win. I think it was just a very dominant positioning from the tanks from Envy. Mm. But still, great play by Envy, I think, forcing out those ultimates and making SSG never really feel comfortable once they got to that, set, that game point. Well, I think the back line uh, obviously did what they could specifically Rock Monkey putting up some big old numbers to make sure that they stayed in the game long enough for any of this to matter, right? Mm -hmm. Huge healing numbers, huge amounts of control from Seismic Crash to the Overpower to the Evil Mojo. There's so much that SSG had going for them in the early game. It just looked easy. It wasn't until items came online that slowed it down. Still kind of rough slash lines for the front line of Envy. It's really the back line. 16-9 for Rock, 21-12 and 12 for Random. Kept the boys in it just long enough. Even even one and eight for Mr. Hayes. Like this is the safest healer in the game. This is the yeah. guy that you know you're picking and and if you're winning games, you're not dying in the entire set when you play Genos. I mean Rock Monkey though. I think this was the critical moment, man. This was this that is literally defense. it. Look how close it is. Yeah, this is the defense, the nose of his payload. It's just it's a hair away. It's as close as it could have possibly been. And that defense was the turnaround moment. For sure, the Leon's pressure just very, very tough for them to deal with. And I, I think FRZ was having an amazing game at the start. Another big turnaround, even though he ended up 5-12, and 12, it was actually Tulki, because going into that 3-1 that, that that mid, I think he was 1-10. Yeah. He was having a very rough game, but definitely survived a lot more as the game went on. It's weird to say for a Barrack. With Wrecker up, it's a lot tougher, but Tulki really knew kind of how to play his dashes and play that natural cover more so than the cover he can give himself. So let's talk a little bit about this draft because one of the things that we were saying is that he, you know, it feels like Envy's kind of being led into something. Mm -hmm. SSG are kind of clearly picking and banning for this one blaster avenue. But at the last second, they pivot, right? That's what's so good about that Mave pick for Envy yeah. is they're one of the few teams where either Rock or Random can play it, and it's going to look damn good. The last second they pivot to this Leon, kind of move what we thought was going to be Rock's pick to Random's pick. Does that play out much differently if they have a Drogos? Or Honestly, is that Leon kind of key to their success? I mean, the Leon was key to them holding at the last second, but I don't know. It might slow down a little bit more if they have the Drogos spamming down. I think NV1 with... I don't think that Leon was bad, but I think the Drogos could have been better for at least stalling out the aggression by them, right? Cassie and Pip aren't really the best counters to that Drogos. Yeah. So not what we're going to end up seeing there though they decided to go another way and Drogo's going to be banned on this map anyway ice mines that indirect knockback indirect Oof. cc and then execute so powerful on a map with such a small objective that ends up being the focal point of every single game she's open miss willow i know this is a pretty decent map for her as well they don't go to it first the point fight so important on ice mines yeah. it, i guess is surgically removing one key point in. of that fight that worth it for SSG? For I guess guy. maybe they're just thinking if we overpower the Willow, we win. You know, if we get her out of the fight, yeah. it's not really a problem. Maybe this might just be also them accepting, hey, we're, we might lose the first mid, and then we'll figure it out from there, you know, once we have ultimates online. Alt-centric comps can be great. Do you know how fe uh, Freeze feels about Willow? Is there maybe anything there kind of dissuading him from wanting to pick it? He didn't get to Time play to her as charge. much as the other players did as soon as she was coming back, but Find FRZ can enemy. more or less play <laughs> anything. It's not... She is not, she might be the least difficult blaster in the class. She's definitely the one that takes the least practice explicitly playing them. Yeah. Willow, Willow, I, I don't think takes like, no, it's not like only a Willow one trick can play Willow. Yeah, yeah. hit it, the left It's definitely flicks. more, yeah, exactly. And, and, and he does that already on the harder characters. So I don't necessarily think it'd be too tough for him to kind of go backwards. I, it's kind of the same, there's a lot of skill, skill ceiling to Cassie and Leon. 
But I think at face value, that's why those are the two characters like the off tank will flex to when it's 3 DPS comp, right? I think at their core, they are the more simple. And right now, simple does not mean ineffective for Willow. She is top dog at the moment. I also just like ice mines for her. You know what I mean? Where you're, yeah. where you're sitting as a backliner on ice mines, it's not too high. And it's high Last enough to where you're just feeling like you're in a damn good spot just constantly be hitting shots even across the way willow's the only blaster that feels like a blaster like has a blast radius i can miss you and still do some damage and that matters when you're shooting across to the enemy window i think that's definitely the impact of her and dredge that's what that's what they bring to that blaster kind of yeah class jargo's an eevee it's like if you're not directing you're my, you're wasting your time yeah you're hitting them for like a leon shot except you had to work 10 times harder for it to happen <laughs> more or less at that point Cassie Willow going to be the DPSs at the end locked in for Envy. They don't have their healer yet. My guess is Genos for the dismount potential, because I think that's why SSG went Ying. This is a Let's get good this comp done. on both sides. SSG definitely screams Ice Mines a little more to me. Definitely. But it's going to depend here, on how well that Victor boy. trades into the Willow, because normally I would give Victor, uh, sorry, I would give Willow the edge in that window to window matchup easily, as long as she can build up those stacks without taking too much damage. Mm -hmm. Well, Victor Bomb King have been extremely effective as of late on Ice Mines. So has Terminus. These are yes. all... Every pick that has been drafted is strong, but SSG's is far more niche for Ice Mines specifically. I think it comes down to this con first pick. Does this overpower have the surgical precision? Does it bring that value? You know, Sadak is typically the con player for this squad, but with Terminus pick, you know you know how that's going to go, right? Yeah. So can Rochelle kind of step up to the plate? find these big connections it's gonna i think it's gonna be term on the term on rochelle for sure term point 10. you think so yeah yeah, yeah that's what they usually do doorstep. from what i've seen from the the matches they played before so doc terminus off tank was my kind of baby and it, it clearly <laughs> did not uh, pay off the way it needed to all right i think it's gonna be solid i, I think they could have still first picked that willow though i think they could have done that and then had the term to deal with the bomb king because i feel like and we still would have wanted a blaster. And Term is so good against blasters on equal footing. Mm. But I think Willow is just a little bit better being able to seedlings the reanimate, just have that spam that it could AoE him just out of reach of his siphon. Might, might kind of overwhelm the term, especially if he's going to be on the point. The only concern I, I have for Envy outside of the Willow, you know, the not a very sustainy sort of composition, yeah. right? Two shields on their front line, so they'll be pretty susceptible to Wrecker later on in the game. And if they fall behind <laughs> versus SSG, have sustained for days, man. Their front line's going to come back to life at some <laughs> point in this game. It's going to be tough to deal with. Let's head down to Ice Mines to see if Envy can clean it up. Well, right you are, Nick, and, and Envy have won two straight now in this set, and that's a feat that SSG are going to have to duplicate they want to win it themselves. Down three to two, heading into Ice Mines. Uh, and I think they said it very well on the desk. You look at sustain, you, you, you talk about sustain and kind of longevity. And SSG certainly have that. And they also have Freeze God back on Bomb King. We saw it yeah. work real well on the first map of the set, Jag Falls. And admittedly, three, I'm just going to pull this one back to the team versus team matchup, but it's going to be, what, two whole more two more games that have to come through yeah. right in, in order for it to stay true envy are in a position to upset something that has been a, a truth all year and that is that ssg wins the set and it looks like he left base with uh with royal subjects uh, does that kind of jump out at you at all it does a little bit i mean coming through um chain reaction usually Actually, honestly, Royal Subjects maybe fits a little more for me than Chain Reaction. Sure. Chain Reaction is definitely the flavor. Now that I'm saying them both out loud, I realize it's probably my preferred just because right. it's a ton of damage. And on Ice Mines, you can typically get a few bombs onto any individual target, but it's definitely the easier to confirm damage right. when it comes through for Royal Subjects. And so Freeze God having that. Expect to see him charge his ult up maybe a little faster but with less insta-burst kills. That's a scary thought. More King Bombs is always a good thing. 12 to 18%. No first blood just yet. Usually costly thing to have happen. Right as I mentioned it, Random Noob grabs it. First Fae Flight of the game. you got to be wow. kidding me. Two minutes in, Ares is able to kite backwards and grab a kill onto Talky. So this isn't going to be a complete sweep. So Doc finally backing up and getting some healing from his own battle shout. Team Envy 
trade one for one. They got 48% on the mid. Marius is in a decent position, potentially trying to come back through. As you can see, again, I think maybe the lead, the, the trade off that was going through, Kresnik has kind of highlighted it. So while they have the sustained game, a lot of the window fight is going yeah. to end up being Willow versus Victor. And I don't, I don't know what to expect out of it. I think random moves going to be incredibly consistent and has already been incredibly consistent. That's yeah. the reason he's 40% on his second Fae flight at 2 minutes and 47 seconds into the game. But I just don't know if Ares is the one that, that has it in him to, to potentially take him down. I don't think that's a trade that goes in his favor. He did grab a, a really nice grenade to confirm a kill there. King Bomb rolls kill. through, connects onto Rubu. That's a big one to look at. 96% for Team Envy. Nobody. Opening the space there for Space Station Gaming. They grabbed the kill, but realized the expanse was maybe just too big. An overpower onto Tulki is just too late. Uh, so they'll look to start off this defense, but Envy grabbed themselves mid number one. Really, really good start to the defense. Nothing better than running them down towards their base if given the option here. Space Station Gaming getting aggressive and being able to kind of stand on Envy's side of the map. Kind of pushing the line of scrimmage further and further towards their base. But a second Fae flight, again, now about a minute and a half after he popped the first one. Which is about the charge rate that he had on the first yeah. one as well. It's very solid damage for him. Good blast shots. But a barrage going to maybe put a needle in that one, a pin in that for now. Going to keep it on the wall. Look at this score. He's already at 36%. I mean, Jeez. it's one of those ults that, uh, you know, charges quickly anyway. But once you start to build some morale boost, it's going to really jump up on you if you're the enemy team 50% of the way there while some others are just trying to get their second ults ready in this game. Terminus, I think with his first, uh, one of the slower charging ults and something you have to look out for, the, the usage of that reanimate is often very important because you only get a couple of them throughout the game. Retaking now is Envy moving forward with a minute left and this is a map where if you can start to get a stagger onto SSG, you know, despite only being a quarter of the way there, a third of the way there, you can make up some ground. There's so much that could, that could happen for him. Again, like you said, it does start to kind of roll straight down the hill if given the, the right amount of push behind it. And Faith Flight is probably, well, the right amount of push behind it if you yep. need it. We've seen Simsalu several times, even though he'll uh, vocalize how much he, he is not did, happy he about did it. it today. <laughs> but uh, he has been a driving force on a willow on this map to close out maps and points for his team yep. in the past. So wouldn't be too surprising to see Random Noob fill that role. Maybe try to burn down that reanimate in the process. I think you can force that yep. and get it get it out of Rachao. It sets up your second round much better. There's Fae Flight from Random Noob looking for some poke damage. Shot out of the sky, down low. Freeze God, King Bomb rolling on in. He's going to connect with Rubu. Assert dominance, not in time. Rock Monkey, one for one trade. Front line for damage, but the respawn's just a little bit closer for SSG. That's Rashal who now goes down. Does he use the reanimate? Not just yet. Holds on to it. Overtime's going to be coming through. Might need it in a second if things keep going the way Envy wanted to. That's a lot of damage. The dodge yeah. just gets oh. burned down by Random Noob. No one's able to focus him out properly from up there. And, and now with Mr. Gone. Hayes in this position, this is good. Envy in a great spot. Ares maybe looking for a barrage, but failsafe activates now for Toki. Dome Shield down as well. Rashao. Does it go off? It, it does. does. Oh no. He needed like another second or two, and at the last moment uses the reanimate. A costly error there from SSG. No reanimate now moving forward. Hit that about as fast oh. as I think he could activate it there. And either needed it to happen a second or two earlier or a second or two later to make the difference. But going in with a fat goose egg in the ult charge column for him. Random noob with an undying round. 62,000 damage. Definitely going to make sure that Rachao feels that one every death this round. And he's been burning down Sadak and Rachao several times with that 62k. Yeah, It's going to be felt eight ways to Sunday by Rachao. And, and they don't have, and, and note that he doesn't have morale boost yet on that Willow. So, you know, he's getting that much charge off of just its base. So he hasn't built up to it just yet. I didn't even realize, but Illusory Rift Barrage were both yep. dropped at the very end there, too. Yeah. They have nothing, essentially, coming into this. If Sadak doesn't connect on that overpower, it's done. Well, he has a good chance to right now, realizing that there's not a great target for Rubu, who's controlling this entire upper area. Does connect on it. The peel's there for Mr. Hayes. 
Get some damage and a kill onto Freeze God. 27% for Envy, climbing up to 30. Space Station Gaming now try to recalculate this retake attempt, but Random Noob doing a great job of zoning out with some damage. And Toki having probably the most boring job of them all. I'm going to stay here and wait till someone comes around the corner. 72% picked up for free. Finally, a little bit of pressure onto him. 36% there on the dome shield. The Faith Flight's about to come up. Envy don't have much else to work with in terms of arsenals, but this has been game ending in the past. Could oh, be now, no. but that's a good shot from Ares. I don't know if I want a Faith Flight immediately into a victor, but that's what Random Noob did. Rubu looking to get aggressive now. Point capture being traded back and forth. These next picks are likely going to decide the first mid. Toki dropping. Very important for Space Station Gaming to identify that. They're going to have a much easier time contesting that point now as Rubu shoulder bashes his way. Doesn't make any ground up to the high ground. Goes Rashao. Barrage goes searching for Ares. Rashao now with the double kill on the Terminus. And that's going to be point number one for SSG. And what a turnaround on that mid from the term. Honestly, that is really well played coming down from Rashao. Who needs a reanimate? I guess. But I will also, I mean, as much as SSG played that really properly, I'm going to have to throw him under the bus. I don't know what that Faith Light was from, from Random Noob. Yeah, you're getting it a lot. Yeah, you can pop it off whenever you have it. That had way more implications behind it, I think, than, than what you would normally have seen. If he gets a good ult off right there, his team wins that objective then and there. Yeah. But, I mean, almost immediately into Victor, who just bra 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 and then he's gone. That's yeah. such a weird decision. I mean, you, you maybe wait until your team can zone out Ares or, or something. But it wasn't there. That's all by the wayside now as Space Station Gaming move themselves forward. But a great looking start to this defense from Team Envy. Shatterfall down from Rashao. No reanimate. Not that it would have been a good time to use it anyway. Yeah. Team Envy now on the defensive. And this is where you start to really buy yourself some time. If you're ever wondering how slow Terminus is to recharge his ult, We've seen, what, four, five Faith Flights so far? Yep. Uh, he's still not at his second reanimate. It takes a long time to get there, as does, you know, normally getting a second life at any point in time that uh, you could potentially find. So far, no one in the real world has been able to do it, so it does yeah. take quite a while. That we know for of, that one to work. That we know of. That we know of. With Rachel coming up, 99% should stick to 100 right here. We'll have it potentially for the end of this push if they really feel like they can commit. Because if it fails, if it does not go through, Envy will find themselves up 3-1. to one. They have 45 seconds to do yep. so. That would be a 3-1 with set point on the line. Losing Ares. Good. Kind of a sneaky flank there from Rubu and Rock Monkey. They go up through short. Double kill for the Cassie. Delayed three for Rock Monkey. Maybe adding a couple extra here. Tulki is going to steal four. Rock Monkey, one more shot. Shield goes up. Shield getting melted. And Ram Noob finishes off the kill. Now you look at the stagger, you look at the distance. This is looking dire and looking like a three on the scoreboard for Envy. You know, 15 seconds left. They have dismounted and corralled pretty much everyone there. Actually, not a lot of dismounts just yet. <laughs> they're all sitting in their base. <laughs> I think SSG recognize what's going on. They're just they're waiting until next round. Well, there's horses. There's in a the back. back. And that's where SSG are. That's that wavelength we got there, Gore. All the horses in the back for Space Station Gaming. Team Envy one point away now on Ice Mines from uh, flipping the script on SSG, grabbing their first win with two weeks left in the PPL over Space Station Gaming. I mean, and you look at just kind of general team morale, this is a big win. They had a tough week last week, Envy did. Yeah. Uh, so getting a win here over SSG, something you've not been able to do this year, I think would be huge. I do like that one momentary flick. When Mittau uses his dimensional rift and travels off into the distance. Yes. And you just get Rock Monkey having like the, the very Batman, where is he? <laughs> moment <laughs> as he flicks around and then realizes, oh, he's dead. Okay, I'll just continue with my day. I'm, I'm very hungry, so I'm going <laughs> to go, go look for more kills on Sadak, who is 0-5 right now. Yeah. Overpower being maybe one of the biggest things he could do for this round. Every single ult available here for SSG. No Faith Flight, no Assert Dominance available here for Envy. Rachao, well, oh, he's no. going to have to use that one pretty fast. Reanimate used through time and space. Connects going to chunk down half of that damage. Freeze God <laughs> with the King Bomb is going to roll on through, but a Dome Shield awaits on the other end, and Rubu gets the kill. That's a barrage from the offside from Ares. Overpower misses as well. You have five ultimates, but none of them are finding any value. 
SSG at 58%, but Team Envy, they got the control. Yeah, I'm going to call uh, at the end of that one, worth for Envy, 100%. He said Envy, or SSG, throw out literally everything they have. Some of them miss. You know, Lucery Rift, which can't miss, doesn't really do much other than keep Chow alive a little bit longer. King Bomb drops too short. Barrage is only able to get a little bit of damage, but not find any kills. And that reanimate was about as rough as a reanimate could go. They're at 84%. 84. They're looking to close it. Sir Dominance drops down somebody, and that's Rochelle, who was in range to get a touch. And now Sadak has to run forward. He's not in range. Team Envy, not only do they flip the script, they burn it and grab a game six win over SSG, their first PPL win over SSG in 2019. And as I mentioned, great team win there for Envy. But making sure they keep the score line in, in kind of line with it. Yeah, it's 4-2, 4-1, right. 4-1, <laughs> four, one, four, one, I think. So a 4-2, a nice little sandwich. Head-to-head -head still there for Space Station Gaming. But, man, it is good to be Envy right now. I mean, yes. you have, a, I would argue, maybe a devastating loss against NIP not last week. Yep. You come in, you're able to beat this team that has been giving you trouble all year that the last time you found success was on the world stage. So you get that feeling, and for them to gear up going into this and helping solidify them in a fourth-place spot, kind of keep them up there yeah. looking forward towards going and straight qualifying to high res expo go into the quarterfinals instead of having to play through that week of qualifier mm -hmm. bracket keeps them comfortable and keeps them kind of scary last year they yeah. were in a very similar position and that's how they won the championship yeah that keeps some parity great point there well we'll see the standings at the end of the day but that creates just a little bit of extra padding a huge difference maker that you have to play through a double elimination week of games yeah or you get a bye to the quarterfinals big differences between four and five envy they get themselves a little bit of space over SSG with a win here in our second and final set of this PPL Thursday. And that means we're going to send it back to the desk to break things down. Thanks, boys. Great job bringing it home there on Ice Mines. A lot of fun, interesting picks, I think, in the draft and a very niche Ice Mines draft that just didn't cut the mustard for SSG. They are handed their first loss from Envy this entire year. This is the fourth time these guys have played and the only time that Envy have managed to win. Yeah, which means that while SSG do have the head be the head to head, yeah. the record now skews a little bit further in Envy's favor. I think they already had a small bit right. of a lead. Not out of reach, but definitely significantly harder for SSG to be able to close that gap. Yeah, we were doing some kind of quick maths up here in the standings, but we'll look at that in a second. Aries, big numbers, but again, not enough. Frankly, not a lot of crazy numbers from Team Envy. Just a lot of great teamwork, team play, rotations at the right times, especially in that last round. I mean, there was a great, or not the last round, second to last round, there was a great assert dominance into that time and space. Those are always super fun. When it feels like your teammate flushed him into this corner, then you just mm -hmm. kind of knock him down. A lot of great stuff between them. Healings basically equalized. Again, this is not a statistical blowout by any means, but it was just Envy being a little bit more effective and winning a lot of these team fights. Again, that tragic reanimate yeah, there. that's what I was going to say. That kind of led to the 2-0. It's a terrible way to get it going. That's, that's a strategic loss more than a mechanical loss, right? I mean... SSG, we know they're mechanically sound, but that, just that moment, the yeah. res into the illusory rift, into the barrage, all at the exact <laughs> moment that the cart gets captured, and it didn't mean that's anything. disastrous. Yeah, bro. Ah, that's that's really tough. It's tough to come back from that too, because that's yeah. just such a that's just such a wet blanket on you. You know, having to pick yourself up, back up from that and get going all in time before, while Envy's fired up and ready to go. Envy just had the momentum to close this set out. Two games straight, their first win ever this year over Space Station Gaming. Let's get it down to an interview with the winners. Well, we're down here with Envy, and I kind of want to segue off of what uh, Nick was just saying. What is it about SSG? Have they just kind of had your number this year? This is a big win for you guys, I know, probably morale-wise, but uh, what is it about Space Station Gaming that's been so effective against you? I think Space Station Games has always just been a very strong team against us. Even last year at Worlds, they they took us to 4-3 in the semifinal. It was probably the closest set ever. Just SSG themselves, they play very similar to us, too. Yeah. So it's just like a clash of battle styles against each other. So if they play better, they're, they're probably just going to win just stylistically-wise. So I'd say that set, it's very rare that we get this, even in 4-3s, but... There was a moment that it was very easy to tell that it was like teetering on the edge of maybe you guys losing the set and what brought you back into it. And it's Bright Marsh 3 0. The payload's about to go in. Everybody shows up. Rock gets like a triple kill, triple I believe, kill. on Leon. 
what was it like uh, just living through that moment? Like, what um, was going through the team comms, your heads? How did that feel? Uh, the comms were pretty frantic. Uh, we were just like, pop everything. We got all, uh, stay on cap, stay on cap. And then, like, as soon as we held out, I just let out a huge sigh because I was like <laughs> holding my breath literally. It was just me and Rock versus uh, the world. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Effectively, uh, a big turning point there in that set. Uh, to kind of pivot back, talk about picks and bands a little bit. Neither of you got to play the buck, but uh, that's been kind of a conversation piece. Uh, PML, PPL, little PCL as well. Uh, what situation is right for Buck? Uh, when do you maybe bring him out? Pretty much when uh, uh, when one of the flanks is banned, usually. You, you just go Buck. Uh, he, he does well against Maeve and Eevee. He just stalls him. Uh, he's also really good with Genos. Buck with Genos pocket basically can duel both Eevee and Maeve very handedly. Early game, like you'd think that Eevee and Maeve with their mobility could just swing the tides, but since they don't have caught on Buck either, it's a very lopsided kind of even but also lopsided towards the buck if he has a generous pocket too well congratulations once again on Thank your you. win 4-2 over ssg <laughs> this time around you get to put yeah. yourself in the winner's column Feels we're going to go back to the desk to close out the day but thank you for your time Thanks so much, guys. And again, congratulations to Envy on their first victory over Space Station for the year. Now we get to talk kind of a little bit about the standings and the mm -hmm. implications of this game. This was the important one today in terms of can these teams shift themselves up and down in the standings. Let's take a quick look at the schedule. We don't have a lot of games left here, folks. Of course, we had the 4-0 the for the Knights today and the 4-2 you just saw for SSG and Envy. However, the week is not over. SSG will play the Knights tomorrow. Envy with the argue, you know, with the much statistically easier matchup there against the Renegades. This is a big week for them. They can close that one out as well. Yeah. Should SSG lose, that's where it's pretty much all over, right? SSG have got to win out from here on out. And Hopefully. I think Envy has to lose out too. Yeah, Envy has to, you know, give take some L's as well. This was the big match for SSG to keep their destiny in their hands, right? Envy have three games left to play. Head-to-head -head still in favor of SSG, but that's only going to matter if the standings can be tied up once again. The first win condition is always going to be that win-loss. Then it goes to the head-to-head -head between the two teams in question. And then if all that's tied up, that's when that game plus-minus map differential on the far right starts to come into play. That is the third line of defense in the tiebreaker. Again, I've already got Virtus Pro written off, I think, barring some catastrophic failure when they come back to finish out their season. They've been looking so good, dominating teams top to bottom. Mm -hmm. I've got them written off as top four, and with that win today, Envy might have just done it for me as well, at least in my own personal top four standings. Yeah, I think they had a pretty good performance. SSG fought back for sure, but Envy finally being able to overcome that that demon on the yeah. SSG's been for them is big. They still have a shot, SSG do, of yeah. making it, Yep. It mostly depends on VP at this point and how they look in the in the weeks to come. Yeah, there's still a lot of big action, still a lot of stuff up in question. I'm just looking at these standings. It's all ebbed and flowed so much. I mean, NIP was at the top. They seemed untouchable. And then Navi yeah. just keep doing the Navi consistency train all the way to the top of the mountain again. The World Championship is going to be really exciting this year. You just have no idea. The PPL has never been more competitive than it has. It's been a real treat to watch this year. We don't have a lot of action left, and there's a lot to be decided, meaning each and every one of these matchups from here until the end carries a lot of weight with it. Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. That does conclude the action for Thursday. We still have Friday coming at you tomorrow. Same time, same place. For me, Kresnik, the rest of the Casters production, and everyone here at Skillshot Media, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Premier League.